Hey! Good good morning. Okay, you guys are unmuted as well, I think. It should be alright. The audio Hi. should what? be fine. We're live? Hello? Yeah, Hello? we're live. Hello? 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 The lads! We're here. Hey, um, sorry. I, I put a minute on the timer again because it's funny. I just keep baiting y'all. It's it's very it's very funny. We just I, had... I want you guys to know, like it wasn't necessary at all. Like we were ready. Everything was absolutely prepared uh, years in advance. We had no mistakes uh, putting up the stream <laughs> at all this time years. around. Years. Uh, uh, we we just needed that more minute just to you know let them wait. Um. We we just had I think the most scuffed setup, like the most scuffed previous like the most scuffed five minute preparation period i have ever seen so <laughs> it started with me actually remembering to change the stream title you might have noticed but forgetting to change the notification and <laughs> i f last time we streamed i was on 500 uh, kilobits per second so i stopped streaming reset my bitrate started streaming again so everyone got a second notification um then I pinged our Discord server. If you're not on there, someone post the Discord server. Geo, please do that. Post the Discord server in the in the oh, chat. Join oh. our Discord. Oh. I pinged everyone in our Discord server, but I posted the the moderator view for of the stream, so no one could click it. Then Geo, who got perms to ping Cube Community, didn't put the Twitch link in. <laughs> we are uh, we are very good at this. The only yeah. person who pinged also, a server correctly. Oh was Ryan on his own server. So congratulations. <laughs> but yeah, um we hey hey guys, we have uh we have Amanatsu and Ryan on the podcast this week because it's World Cup's over. Summer is officially over. Actually it's the end of 2023 basically. World Cup's done, there's nothing left. We can basically finish up the year. But yeah we got uh Ama who is the the person behind the tournament, basically. And we have Ryan, who is now officially uh, a B Table World Champion. America went Let's 4 go. 4 and Ryan now has his first title, first of many. Hopefully, we'll see. We'll see if he if if they liked you actually. If you get if and you get to do it again. Didn't need to play. <laughs> you didn't, didn't even True. need to play. You should, you should try play. to you should try to win UC next time, Ryan. Oh yeah, yeah true. <laughs> he won the tournament from a different continent. I can't believe That's it. That's a badge you're not getting, right? <laughs> <laughs> the the elusive did they, badge. Did they let you? Did they let you guys give badges for that? Fuck no. No, <laughs> no yeah, it's, restri it's no. restricted, right? So yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. I'll fight him. I'll fight him on this one. I'll fight him this year, or next year. Yeah, we'll we'll get, we'll get it. We'll get it eventually. We should it's, get like. It's, yeah, it's like I get what their, like restrictions are with the like. Being a restricted tournament, not having badges, but it feels like you should have badges. For like that. rank restriction tournaments had badges before, yeah. right? Mm. Did they? we had that uh, that one we did at CC where we had the above oh. 150 and below, and they oh, gave badges. But, the summer but saber stars. Technically, no, no, no. Like uh, of the very first one we did had, you had it was two tournaments. It was above rank 150 oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. below. They I gave those, but it's technically allowed for everyone. But yeah. technically division restricted. Of, do division of BSL like uh, lower divisions get badges for BSL? Lower division just qualifies for higher division, right? So was that? Oh, that's, right. No. that's right. The winner qualifies Does for it? higher division. Yeah, I think that's, that was, that's, that's the sure. way it works. But I don't think they get badges for number one and two and three for lower div. Okay. CBT was technically restricted. Wait, why? Why was CBT restricted? No, it wasn't. Seska said it. Uh, it had restrictions based on like skill or whatever, right? But well, everyone, anyone well, everyone yeah. could play, yeah, yeah. but there was just a limit of what each team could have. Yeah, there wasn't sure. a limit of like who could play. Well, on, on CBT, you couldn't play if you're too good, and on EUC, you can't play if you're too American. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, true. <laughs> Not being European is a skill issue. Like, yeah. That's yeah. what we're getting at. Just that's be what... European. But Fucking. that is not the tournament uh, we're actually here to talk about. The, we we got yeah. the we got the the two boys for a different tournament uh, because uh, it, the World Cup happened, right? That it did. At, at some, I think it's over. Uh, it's USA won. It's all it's all over. over. <laughs> You're talking about Rocket League, a World Championship, right? Oh yeah, no, I'm talking <laughs> about the one uh, where NA had a chance actually. So. Oh. Uh, <laughs> unfortunate so that's uh, yeah uh, world cup ended 
And let me tell you guys, it ended with a bang. Uh, because I, I, Ixen, I, I'm, I'm sure you, you, you share it with me. We need to talk about the grand finals, because this year's grand finals was so hype. It was hype map after hype map after hype map, and I would really like to go through it with you. Yeah, I, I, I will agree with that. In my opinion, best grand finals that we had so far. By a margin as well. I agree. Uh, and I think the reason behind uh, such a hype grand finals, which usually speaking, because the USA is so dominant, it's usually not such a fun match. But the reason why this year was so cool is because the UK is catching up. And we're talking about, we'll talk about it later on. I want to hear Ryan's uh, perspective on this afterwards. But let's go through uh, the map, map. So, of course, Ryan had to botch the uh, the role. Uh, <laughs> no, he didn't botch the role. He botched it first. I feel like my internet is lagging a little bit. I'm sorry, Chad. Oh, no, never mind. Yeah, oh that's awesome. The role. Yeah. Uh, it's not Italy they, internet. It's me. Pretty sure it's me. It's definitely me. God damn. Yeah. I guess, guess it's just me. Guess it's just me my on the free, podcast. My freeze frame is amazing. It's just me. So it's, it's all me. <laughs> Ryan just has the death stare. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I think, I think at this point it's a skill issue because if you look at my camera, it's perfect, right? I don't know how that happened, but I have the perfect connection to whoever whoever might be hosting the stream. I, I really don't know. That's crazy. But I have the I have the best connection, so my camera is wonderful. It's just uh, a, a skill issue for you guys. Can you guys can you guys hear us just fine? Because if that's the case, we'll. It was lagging for a little bit, but I'll it I'll looks, do the I'll, I'll pull another funny. Yeah, now it's fine. I'll pull another funny and lower the bitrate again. Not not by that much, but by a little bit. Can I do that uh, while broadcasting? I can, that's awesome. Yes, you can. Yep. So, uh, the UK banned Bad Dream, uh, and it, 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 it's something that, uh, of course, I want to have confirmation by Ryan, but they only banned accuracy uh, until the, the US. The end. We did. Yeah, 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 you guys banned only accuracy. That's yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. And the, yes, the, the, the proof is in the pudding. The reason why it's a, a totally fair strategy uh, Terminal and Mesa was banned by the UK, by the way, as first uh, ban. Boo, bad boo. Um, yeah, I would like to see that. It's such a speed play. Yeah, no, no one on either team wanted to play that. Yeah, no, I didn't think so. But it been... <laughs> yeah, that, that meant <laughs> I don't care about either teams. I, I wanted to see it myself, and uh, you guys are bad for not playing it. <laughs> I messaged Maddie before the match, and I was like, "I'm assuming you guys are going to ban this, but if you don't, we're not picking it. No one wants to play it." So even if they didn't ban it, 100% we were going to pick it. And Maddie thought it was a bait because they banned it first. So uh, if Maddie believed you, they wouldn't have banned it because it's a safe ban, right? So they, uh, mm. Maddie didn't believe you. That's funny. I mean, it's a safe ban because we would have beaten them on that. Like, but I that's don't know. That's true, but like it, it's, it would be a free ban for them because that's like already banned if they believed you. True. But they didn't. So sure. Maddie didn't believe you, which is really funny. Uh, that being said, the first map was Don't You Dare, picked by the UK. And the UK actually did it. Not only that, uh, they had to go through with uh, a replay, though. And I believe the replay didn't have any misses or anything. So no, it was no. just a replay it was, out of... It was just yeah, it was just a Maddie skill really replay. underperformed. Uh, yeah, I was, I was, I yeah. was gonna say that Maddie, Maddie like improved by zero point two percent almost, which yeah. is ridiculous, uh, on an act map, at around ninety nine percent. Which it's uh it's kind of funny because in the the current match text, so like for context during that match, obviously magician knows I was at the Rocket League Worlds like in the <laughs> arena for for the entire match. And uh, so, like, half the time I had good enough connection to unmute my mic. Uh, and other times I was just talking in mac match text. And Maddie was, like, really stressed after that first map. And I didn't realize because I didn't see any of the scores. I only saw the team scores because I was watching the cube community stream at, like, 180p. 
So I, can I only the, saw I can put Big the picture up. Wait. So <laughs> Chad, I'll, I'll flash the picture for a second. This is this is uh, how Ryan was uh, winning his tournament. He's sitting uh, yeah, at the at a picture. booth of one of the Rocket League teams. <laughs> so that so that's how that happened. And those were part of it. We got kicked out because the, <laughs> the Rocket League match was a 4-0 sweep, and it was so quick. So we actually got kicked out of the arena, and I was walking around outside with my laptop in my hand. You so, should have told him, wow. like, do you, do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the captain of the US I'm the World Cup as well. <laughs> I'm an A's last but, hope. You got to let me stay. <laughs> But yeah, so like I was like half uh, talking in the uh, in the text and like talking uh, via mic. But Maddie was really stressed after that match because of him underperforming. And I didn't know that, so I was talking. I was answering uh, Garsh's question about who was who was winning or who won the uh, Rocket League uh, championship, and they got really bad because they thought I was just like like shitting on their performance. And I was like, no, <laughs> it's not. It's not. I was just answering a question. But uh, yeah, they came back and won. They did really well. Uh, we kind of expected them to take an ACK map. That was what we went in to the match, uh, just assuming. So we kind of, we thought we would go down by one. It was so, close though, right? 400 points. 400 yeah. points. Yeah. I, uh, but, you know, I, was, I was watching in uh, my car because I was driving to another city. Oh, um, <laughs> but so I was watching that and they, they won the ACK map. I know you guys are going to talk about the next match later, but like... I thought the UK was going to win a few maps after that. And uh, we'll talk about the next map. But like I, I was going to say like it's, yeah. it, it, it looks it looked kind of crazy to me. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It was really close for a lot of maps, which which is what yeah. made this really hype. Um You guys should have seen me live like a live Ryan reaction during through the fire and flames. Oh yeah. Well uh, <laughs> Give, give me a second. A for video. Yeah, I should have yeah, taken but... a video. I really should have taken a video. He's just standing in the parking lot with his laptop in his head, just visibly sweating almost. It's <laughs> awesome. It's awesome. But be before that, so so you you say that you expected the UK to take a map, uh, inaccuracy, yeah. especially. So that's why you guys went for all accuracy bands, of course. But my question at this point is, is the UK the best ACK team in the world? Like, do you put them above the US if you expected them to pick, to, to take? I think it completely depends on the map. Uh, I think, and it's, I don't think it's a two way t uh, tie here. I think it's a three way. I think Denmark, UK and US all could beat each other at different maps. So, so you put Denmark in even to compete against the US in, in accuracy. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, well, there, it, Denmark has a little bit harder of a time because, uh, like, they don't necessarily have. I, I don't, it depends on how well Rack is playing because Rack can be equivalent to Pandita or Cool Pick uh, a right. lot of the time, depending on the map. So, it, like, for us, we we lost. Us losing Kira made that possible, I would say, because Kira made up a lot of the uh, the act for for the team. So. We had to rely a lot on, I mean, we swapped people out all the time. Like we had Redek come in for some, we had, uh, I think Garsh was in for most of them, but we did swap him out, I think for one or two maps, which that says something. We had someone that came back just for World Cup who was completely washed and played for us on the ACK team. So, I mean, it says a lot about Garsh, but it also says about like what we kind of needed the most. So we knew going into the whole tournament that like compared to other things, ACK was going to be on a weaker side, even with Pandita and Cool Pick. So that kind of, I have a question about that. It's like, do you, do you think that the US can make a better act team or do you think you did the best with what was available? We can have can, a better act team, but I don't know it. if it balances the rest of the team out well. Like there are players that we could have, uh, like Pulse, for example, Pulse Lane uh, would be an amazing uh, pick for the team. But the problem is it's limiting to just act. Like we already have Pandita for that. So it's hard to justify having another player that can only play ACK maps when there's a lot of other skill sets to play. So, you're, so you're, when you're going into picking the players, you're, you want you want them to fill multiple roles, basically. Yeah, because I mean, we do have those kind of people. Like, because I mean, in terms of accuracy, I could have put my myself on the team, but because I, I on average I beat uh, Bitesy, Redek, and Garsh on most of the ACK maps. However, I'm not gonna play anything else. Everyone else is better at mid speed than me i can't play tech and i can't play speed so there's no point of putting someone like me or pulse on the team instead 
Right. Um, and uh, Neo uh, about as well, like as they said, yeah. But Neo doesn't want to play in tournaments, so there's, it's, it's kind of just very. Uh... I mean, that goes for pools as well, I think. <clears throat> pools is also not a tourney player. He's playing in that Rusura. tourney though, right? Is he? I don't know. I don't, I don't. I don't know. Like I, I just remember like one message he sent where he was like, "I don't play tourneys in that server." <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he is. I don't know. <laughs> I heard about that with some other teams too <clears throat> having issues this year with uh, good players not wanting. Yeah, to I play wonder. I, I, I feel like that might. I, f I, I can remember someone being very mad that the best player in their country didn't want to play on the World Cup team. Yeah, some, I don't quite someone remember. That I, it could yeah, be somebody. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't quite remember who it could have been. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I'm not mad that he's not that he, that he doesn't want to play with us. I'm mad that is a bit of an ass and doesn't want to communicate with us. <laughs> <laughs> that goes a, a step further. But yes, that's kind anyway. of a big shame that Alexa doesn't play with us. Because he's uh, truly uh, an amazing gamer. And he would be amazing in the team. He's been around a long time too, right? He's been a, 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 a around for quite a long time. And he, I think, honestly, that uh, despite his best effort, uh, he's a criminally underrated player. Like... Uh, he is very, very good, especially at some things, uh, very niche things, not necessarily tournament things, but he's amazing. But unfortunately, that it is how it is. Yep. Uh, yeah, not much you can do there. <laughs> yeah, truly, uh, truly not. Uh, I, I have one more question before we go th uh, to through the fire and flames um, on the uh, on the team's balance. Uh, who who do you see? Uh, what do you see, Seret covering especially? Because of course there's speed, but I I see that at this point you have speed covered massively, even without Seret at this point. Um, it depends on the kind of map because like Seret has a very specific playstyle that <clears throat> he can excel at uh, for in terms of speed, and that goes for mid speed as well because he played a mix of mid speed and speed, which was where his role kind of was and the maps that he can do well on oh i guess uh classic maps as well there is uh that oh, was like okay. when i went into bringing Serret on uh it basically was like yeah he can play classic he will basically play most speed maps unless there's like a he, do he doesn't do well with the higher bpm stuff like he wouldn't have played terminal missa for example uh because he just he can't hit that bpm well uh but yeah, he when when I was filling out the team, it was more like yeah, he'll play classic maps, he'll play speed maps, and he'll play upper mid speed maps, uh, which he kind of did most of the time. I mean, he was a, a bit busy like during this World Cup, so there were some maps that he just sat out simply because he didn't practice them. Um, right. Which that's the thing. I mean, like we we have people that can slide in for other people, which is I guess what gives us such a good advantage. Um, so it, it didn't affect us too too much, but. Yeah, I mean, Sarah can be very deadly for, for the things that he actually plays in, which is why he was kind of a no-brainer to bring back. All right. I have, uh, sure. And I know that you have that question too, too Gio. Maybe you forgot, but um, Just Call Me Jack was supposed to be oh, on the yeah. team as well, right? And yeah. I remember, I remember us talking about it, and you told me that Just Call Me Jack is actually really good at, at Ack as well. Can you, He's like, better than you would think, yeah. Yeah, can can you like who would he replace in the team and what was would his roles be? Like because that actually interests me a lot. So it's kind of hard to say. Like looking back at it now, it probably wouldn't be the same answer, but originally it was Garsh. It came down to I was trying to figure out uh like I had a core set of players and then there was a tryout between three three of the players. Um it came down bet uh, between Bitesy, Donkey and Garsh and Jack would have been in that uh mix as well for the final mm -hmm. uh i think it was two spots so um obviously we, would, we went with bitesy and garsh uh jack would have been someone that we probably would have had on the team but unfortunately he was out of the country for most of the tournament so he wasn't in um he's just kind of a really good tournament player and i i want to say that my, my answer would change now because garsh played almost every single map for us which was so, amazing so saying that i was gonna he was gonna uh be the replacement of garsh kind of would make me sad at this point but uh next year i can imagine uh 
that that will be the role that he fills since Garsh will no, uh, no longer be playing the game. I, I, I see him sliding in for a Garsh who kind of plays a lot of the like, for Jack, I see him playing a lot of the more like higher uh, maps. So like high, uh, high speed, high tech, because uh, I mean, he's like a challenge player. And then he, when he slows his game down, he he can act well as well. So if he, if his act is good enough, then he can slide in there as well. It's insane how much like raw tournament experience and and just affinity to that kind of environment that Garsh has, because not yeah. only on Beat Saber, but on a, a lot of other games as well. Like he's very, uh, he has that affinity for for tournaments that makes such a big difference. Like mm -hmm. even if the PBs are not up there with the with the rest anymore, just because he doesn't play anymore, when it comes to tournaments, he's just a menace, and you don't That's realize why, like... until you get there. Yeah, exactly that. Because like when when the tryouts happen, technically Donkey beat out Garsh on almost everything. It was extremely extremely close. Like every single time, like because we were playing it live in multiplayer plus, and uh, every single time they were like neck and neck the entire song, except maybe one map for each of them. Like Garsh won one uh, by a lot, and then Donkey won one by a lot. Uh, but they were so close, and then I, it just came down to I know Garsh was still coming back so i know he could improve uh so i saw like a higher potential there for being something better than with, with donkey which donkey would have been a great choice as well it's just at the time it's like with the with the experience and with the potential that he had i was like there's i have to make this this call rather than with donkey and then bitesy's tryout was more of just like can his pc handle doing this because he was having a lot of pc troubles but then he kind of figured out that whole situation um and it obviously ended up being a great choice. I see people in chat asking who Donkey is, which sadden, saddens me yeah. greatly because uh, Donkey yeah. is such a... He's not, he's not very vocal in the community, but he's a very good uh, US... I mean, I'm pretty sure he's still in the top third, 40, 30? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, I think he used to talk more than he does now. Yeah, probably. So. Yeah. Uh, nowadays, uh, actually training their parents for a parents tournament. True. <laughs> his dad, I believe, uh, was uh, one of the participants. And he's going to be again, I think. I'm actually curious what rank he is now, because his name is not... So he's 31 right now. His name is not Donkey on Score Saber at the moment. Oh. Uh, oh. Which I will paste his Score Saber profile. Yeah, so... It does make sense, yeah, like Seska said, because he, he never has Donkey as his name on Scorsese, so it's kind of hard to realize that it's him unless you know it. <laughs> He's a memer. Nice. The name right now is mm, Ice Cream So Good, Gang Gang. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I, I refuse to lower myself to that name. <laughs> I have no idea what that is, so I can do it. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, uh... Internal <laughs> That's me. That's me. I told you this might happen. I was... uh, I'm not too hot. Yeah. Literally Sorry. get a notification for that. I figured this would happen. Sorry. That's great. Uh, uh, while we wait for Ama to, to, to be back to to life, uh, TTF Faf. TT Faf. TT Faf. TT Faf was insane. For the, the like the whole way through until the like last f part, which is the hardest of the the whole map, the UK was actually taking it with Maddie especially popping the fuck off and then starting to miss one after the other at the end. Um, That's rough. It's like once 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 a miss is there, like they just c start coming. Like I know yeah. that as well. Like sometimes you just like you're in the zone and that one miss that just throws you off. And you could you could tell that happening. I think like Maddie had like three misses very close to one another, and mm -hmm. uh, they, the entire match was like I I know that I expected this to be a very one sided thing. Oh, same. When this was picked, I was like, okay, the U.S. is gonna lead by like at least half a percent, maybe a whole percent or more even, and that was not what happened at all. And that was insane to me because like the final score difference is 10,000. Just, just 10,000. And this map is what, like seven minutes long or something? Seven and a half minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That's ridiculous. That's yeah. so ridiculous. Like it was so close. Oh, we got our Anna back. Hello. Yeah, I'm sorry. Ah. I'm on my webcam now. It's not as nice. But... <laughs> that totally works. Over Discord, that's really fine. 
Um, yeah, honestly, so in terms of what you said, Ixon, when I went into picking this, I also had the same thought. I was like, okay, this is something that we easily have yeah. over the UK. This was the one map that Garsh really, really underperformed on. He, he was uh, still the best. <laughs> he was still the best, best <laughs> but he underperformed. He was regularly one missing and FCing throughout the entire FC. World Cup. Yeah, His, he has good. number one on it, I think, because he no. FC'd it. Cooley has not have number it anymore. one. 96 oh, So it was really funny. At the beginning, uh, when he, this was when we didn't even have the team set yet. Like Garsh was not on the team yet. And this was also another thing that factored into uh, him playing was I set out one bounty for the entire, for the, that was the only bounty I set out. I was just like, okay, we need to improve on classic maps because uh, we have like three players, if that, that can play them like well. And um, so I was like, I just took through the fire and flames and I was like, I saw cooling on it. It was a recent score. I was like, beat cooling score and you'll get twenty dollars. Garsh came back forty five minutes later with an FC and beat and beat cooling score. And I was like, bro, this is supposed to be like a multiple day thing, and you came back and it was just immediately immediately done. Well, Colin Cosa uh, took it personally because he got a he one did. miss in ninety six forty three, which is yep. better than eleven days ago. Garsh uh, yeah. FC ninety six twenty six. So it was, it, they, they have been battling that out for, uh, for quite some time, uh, at this point, but yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's saying something when Garsh is like consistent with cooling on that kind of map. Like that's, yeah. that's what cooling is peak on. So beating cooling on classic maps is basically impossible. I, dude, it might, that might be, I had, I, I beat cooling on one classic map that I really play a lot and really like a lot. I'm not going to tell you because someone's <laughs> going to snipe me on that for sure. But I have, that might even be like my, one of my last number ones. And I have it above cooling and I don't want anyone to take it from me. So if you find it, don't, please don't snipe me. I'm very, very proud of that score. Please don't snipe me. <laughs> you shouldn't have said that you have number one on that because now it's right. easy to find. <laughs> I, I'm just saying that- Is it? Can you sort by, by number one? You didn't need to saw it. You can just search for it. Yeah, it's an old score. It's an old. I'm, score. I'm, I'm just saying the 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 evening that you said that you had the first ever 400 PP play on Tower of Heavens, <laughs> uh, I went and played it as night you by like three percent from five five percent. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That's that one of my really favorite fun. videos. That's one of my favorite videos of all time, by the way. Like, it's so nostalgic. Like you see, you see the video, right? Everyone, the 400 I video? I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. That's, that's my favorite video. With all the screenshots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone screenshots like, I was like, I think one, one of me is like, who's the magician? <laughs> yeah, it was good. Magician. Yeah, it was good. Well, back in, he had to be funny. there. Back in the day, it was like, magician, literally no one knew who he was. And then all of a sudden, he just because all these number one scores were like, is he cheating? Like, what is <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I read all those messages later because that was in the in the pro discord when i wasn't in it yet because that was when and when i signed up for the worldwide tournament and i literally played nothing competitively before that the only person that knew how good i uh, i was was Hammerman because he was secretly coaching me yeah. but yeah, no one else had, uh, had, had any idea it was really funny it, it is really funny because like these days people don't realize that you were actually really fucking good at the game at one point. Uh, <laughs> like yeah, you joke about like, oh, I can FC 93s. Everyone's like, ah, this magician guy, he's just like a casual dude. And we're not talking like 600 years ago, you know? I, I mean, it's, it's getting old at this point. I mean, in Beat Saber like, time, what, it is 600 years, years ago. Yeah. It's over it, it is getting ago. quite a, quite an age nowadays, actually, yeah. Damn, Mama, we are old. We are, I don't we think are... many people would believe if I told them I was sixth place for a very long time. Yeah, you held top ten for ages. <laughs> yeah, I actually Definitely. didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, Amo was top ten for a while. Definitely. I mean, I knew you were me. good at the game, but I didn't know you held top ten for that long. PPV one, the entirety of PPV one, and then like just after like September, like B two came out, I was still top thirty for like months. But yeah, not not anymore. <laughs> I, I I remember only this. Uh, of course, I'm much a, a much newer player. I started playing like in essentially early 2021, and I remember the first, the year that Italy actually signed up for World Cup, which was that year. Just because I I managed to get a community together because before that it was just so scattered, 
uh, we we had Ama uh, telling us in our, in our chats that he was way better than all of us. Yeah. And he, he would make yeah. the team and uh, he would destroy all of us. Yeah, not yeah. anymore, Am. I was, I was making fun of you. Yeah, not anymore. You guys are way better now, for sure. I did, it was funny though because I did I played the the qualifiers that year and I did beat a lot of your players. Yeah. So I made fun you did of you. Beat almost all <laughs> I only, I only did it just because like I wanted to see if I was actually like if I was just trolling you or if it was for real, but it was for real. So. Yeah, we were trolling. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, so yeah, TTF TT Faf was. Oh yeah, we're on uh, that topic. Really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, we have made it two maps into the grand final in 30 minutes of the full right, combo good. podcast. Yeah, we, we let's, gotta, go, let's go. We gotta keep this up, otherwise we're gonna stay, stay here to, all, yeah. all night. Uh, let me go back to that. Uh, so right. I, I'm gonna go th through the, the the interesting ones. Uh, of course, another band 22 from the US. Uh, Accuracy Dimension War Band by the UK. It looks like they're going for the hardest hitters. Uh, the UK, they really don't want to play the, the most highly difficult stuff. So actually, the, those two bands are, are kind of interesting. Honestly, kind of more than the rest of the uh, the match. But uh, so we were really unsure what to ban. Uh, we weren't originally going to ban 22. Um, and I just got a ton of DMs from Pam. I was like, please ban it. Please. And Bitesy was going on. He's like, no, don't ban it, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's in my ear the entire time. And uh, I was like, I really don't know what to do. I was so torn because I, I was like, you know what? Pan has never asked me to do something like that. So I was like, I'm just going to I'm gonna go with his judgment and ban it. And it was a great call because I don't even remember what uh, the other option was. But uh, they wanted to ban something else. And then I was like, we are really riding on the fact that they banned Dimension Wars. Because we're just going to... We didn't want to play Dimension Wars. So... We okay. were hoping for uh, Megaton, and they banned the Metro Wars. So I was like, "Yes, let's go." So I wonder. I wonder if Pan asked you to ban it because he wasn't confident, or was he? He was confident that he wasn't gonna get number one, because you know that Pan only <laughs> submits number ones, and he he managed to go through the whole World Cup only submitting number ones. So he did it. Did you, so did you maybe, ask why? Did you ask me? Why? Yeah. Yeah. DM, DM Pan now, why, if that was the reason. Pan I wanted to ban. I did not actually, but no, I think it was. I think it was because uh, he was not confident enough to like, I guess, carry that map specifically. Uh, because I mean, it does kind of rely on how well he does compared to the other team. So if he's not confident enough to beat Maddie and Crusader and Aqua and them, or at least beat them by a good enough margin, then we're just gonna lose. So. And I mean, that, if that's if, just my opinion. if he didn't get number one on it, like the the risk was even getting like number three or four. Uh, getting number four would have been an absolute tragedy for Pan, of course. I don't <laughs> think that that's a map that he would get, like something that's not first on. I I don't I don't think either, honestly. But, I think that's that's made for Pan. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but, he was okay with playing stuff that like because I told him from the very beginning I was like you are good enough now to increase the level of speed that you play as long as you can hit it consistently i was like if you don't get number one that's fine and i told him i was like you need to make sure that it's fine that you're not number one uh because like i mean he did play like i remember a couple years ago i don't remember if it was last year or the year before like he, he couldn't play lower he just played he just played the normal act map now he's he's getting to higher like nps and i think it's going to keep getting like higher as as time goes on which is kind of the hope because the the better that he can play on other stuff the better for for us can you because imagine whatever he plays, he in two well. years pandita on speed just and he's still 99 on a 350 bpm map that would be so funny i could see like i could I see him getting terrifying. to the point where he plays something like first rate town uh because that was in world cup and that's a map that me and olaf made uh it's i mean it's a seven nps map so it's not the easiest like i can see him getting to the point where he can play that and getting a top five score consistent uh which is great um because that's like top five including our team which we were pretty solid in mid speed so that's that that was the goal and i think we've progressed this year to kind of hitting that point 
Uh, and I mean, he did play our story, which uh, was yes. mid speed, and it's still yeah. number one on it, by the way. So, <laughs> yeah, so far, not, only not, a, number one. No, not, not by a lot, though. Like, not no by a lot. Scores. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not one of those scores that he sets nowadays where it's so distant that he's confident he's gonna stay number one essentially uh but before we get to our story of course megaton killer for me that's the the the, the, the goat uh i've had so much fun watching Meg megaton killer not because it was a particularly f close match in fact it wasn't at all the difference was 311,000. i wonder uh, who's so to blame for that difference yeah <laughs> Essentially, you could, yeah, you could have lost Garsh and still won that match. <laughs> <laughs> not, not really. It, it is two million points for the whole map, but it, I mean, it's a massive difference. Yeah. Uh, and of course, we've had what I will staple as my choice for the best uh, performance of this whole World Cup: uh, Calvin's ninety-five and ninety-three FC uh, on a map that is not supposed to be FCable. <laughs> like, it doesn't look real. Yeah. Yeah, that uh, kid is going to... Uh, he's going to be something. I was amazed with how... Uh, just his performance week after week after week. It, it Still, still like, you could see the improvement throughout the tourney. It's yeah. actually incredible. Including on Ak. He worked, he worked on Ak, too. Yeah. So, it, like, it, just him all around. And he, he kept saying, like... You would think that this is just someone that wants to play a map in World Cup, but it, every time he said it, it was true. He was like, I got this because like we had a sheet that had like the average score of like what people got uh, on, on each of the map because I, I told him like to play it multiple times. So that way we can see how consistent they are and st stuff like that. Um, I don't want to go too detailed with that, but he uh, he had this specific score on one of the maps. And this was an ACK map, like a, a slower ACK map too, which he could not do at the beginning of the tournament at all. And uh, he goes, I know I got this, but I bet you I will get, I, he's like, I promise you I'll get higher. It's in the middle of the tournament. I play better under pressure. And I was like, fine. <laughs> he went up, beat a score by 0.1%, which on an act map is so incredibly significant. I was like, dude, what are you on? <laughs> and then it's, every time he, he stopped playing like Omega Todd Killer, I was just like, I, I really don't understand how you're real. And you're 13 years old. Uh, he, uh, just, that's the, just that, that, that's it. <laughs> uh, before, before that match, he had a one miss on Megaton Killer uh, with uh, an accuracy on the mid 94s and an FC accuracy of 95.3. Yep. I remember it clearly. He exceeded it with 95.9. Yep. He's at this point still today number one on that map, on that map by 1.56%. 1.56. 1. <laughs> like the second is 94.3. He's 95.9. That's disgusting. Yeah. Yep. That disgusting. Is, that is a gap. That is, yeah. it, that is a gap. That, that is really wild. Yeah. Have you seen... I, I know you, you haven't seen the Magic Magician because you were on the in the arena as well. Uh, have you seen th that map in particular? I haven't yet. I haven't you yet. You go see that because uh, A, there's uh, me and Ixen were... Freaking the fuck out! Like, you're screaming. <laughs> it was at... it was so good because like even though it was so one sided, it was still incredible to like watch it. it it's actually it was so wild. Like, I can't I can't like this is this is one of the few times where you're watching a match of like eight players going one uh, like against one another and you just don't give a shit about seven of them. Like you just <laughs> don't care. You're like I don't care about this match. I don't care who's winning actually because I'm just gonna watch Calvin actually obliterate this map. And it, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how he does it. I was, I, was expected it. I was driving in the car and I literally, I, as if I grabbed my phone, Calvin is fucking crazy. And I'm very <laughs> in the text. Like, I was like, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, I don't the right know. reaction. That, that kid is going places. He. Yeah. Absolutely. He's fourth on the leaderboard now. And he's not far behind Matty. It's I like, hate to, like it's three hundred PP. I hate to make the comparison, but he's literally the Beat Saber equivalent of Zen in Rocket League at this. Point. Like, oh, you shit. gotta explain that. Oh, know. that is a 
I, yeah, man, do you wanna... I don't play. I've never played Rocket League and never watched Rocket so, League, and I know who Zen is. Do you, That's so big. Is. Zen is a French player uh, for 16 Rocket League. Sixteen years old. Sixteen years old, and he is known for being Rocket League's like little prodigy. And he showed it in his first live tournament. So ever since he joined Team Vitality, they have not lost a a, a tournament. They are a hundred percent win rate, including the World Championship that just happened. It's was, not even close. Also, he was like way younger, but under a cut for being able to play. So he was he banned for like yep. two years. He was banned because he played on someone else's account. Hmm. Well, he was and under 15. But he was in, under Rocket 15. League, in Rocket League, you can only play in tournaments if you're older than 15. And he played when he was younger. So he got... He played when he was 14. So, so he was banned until his 16th birthday. Yeah. And then... Basically, on his on his birthday, he got signed for Vitality, and then he started playing about 90 days ago, and in those 90 days, they won every single regional, that's three, they won the major, that was not close, and they won the world championship. This kid has made $250,000 in tournament winnings Peace. in 90 days. Oh, and my internet is gone again, that's great. Don't, you don't have those... Like, yeah, you know, but he like the reason I made that is because Alvin is so young. He he just became like legal to play in CC tournaments and any other tournament for that matter. Uh, so I don't think he's gonna stop here. Like he's just gonna get better. As soon as he starts staying better at speed. I'm sorry, Chad. No, no one's gonna stop him. Like who who's gonna be better at that point? He'll be so well rounded. I mean, he's not going to be the uh, most amazing act player in the world, but, like, in terms of an overall tournament player, and even for score super ranked, like, he's going to be... I don't see anyone beating him. Once he is, like, at his peak. Do you remember, um, there was a... There was a kid in, like, 2019. Alex was his name, I think, in the U.S. And, like, he came out and, like, he... So it was... Keep community did our first tournament. It was a rank above 150 and then rank below 150, right? It was separated. And so he was, at the time, he was like 180 or something. Oh, so yeah. Like oh, level. my yeah. God. Yeah. And he blew out the whole tournament. And I literally got DMs. Yeah, Alex the cutie that I was saying. So I literally got DMs saying, like, this isn't fair. Like, he's sandbagging. I'm like, he's 13. Like, he's not sandbagging. He has no idea what you're saying. Like, what do you say? Like, he was He doesn't know 80. what that means. During the tournament, I think like right at the end, like grand finals of like the lower bracket tournament or whatever, like he he did get above rank 150 and he went way higher than that. But and so people were complaining. I'm like, dude, he's like 13 years old. What do you? I'm not gonna like DM him. And his dad was always there in the chat. I'm like, like DM his dad, like, hey, your son's cheating. I'm like, he, what? He's... <laughs> so it was like it was like that though. Like it, it was like that kind of thing. Like he he like blew through the rankings. I think he was like top 20 or something for a while. But I don't know where he is now. I, I remember the name now. <laughs> Yeah. That I, had I think he's inactive now. Yeah, he's probably just doesn't play anymore. But the, at the time, like it felt like this, like this kid just literally child comes out of nowhere and just. I kind of experienced that too, not with Alex because that was before my time. But yeah. uh, the first tournament I ever uh, was a part of uh, was Comfy Sabers. I don't know if anyone knows that tournament, but it was run by. I passed uh, it this year. I, it's it's still going on. No, no, no. I'm sorry, not Comfy Sabers. Oh, okay. That's the, the, yeah, that's your guys. Or that's uh, Titus. Beat the hub? No, it was, uh, oh my gosh. I'm still in, I'm still in the, uh, hold on. Uh, <laughs> I'm curious. I'm still in the, I have to find it. Simply Sabres. Oh, oh, oh I've heard yeah. of it. Yeah, yeah. So that was run by Sabubu, Abby, and Flea. Yep. And it was a three division tournament, which I was in the lowest division. And, oh. uh, and then depending on whatever uh, pronunciation of his name, I don't. Everyone called him two different things. It's either Agate or a Gate, whatever you called him. Oh, a Gate. Uh, yeah. He started in that tournament. No one knew who he was. He won the lower division, like my division, went up to the second, won that, and then almost won the first one. Wow. Jesus. So we were all like, what, "What the fuck?" And then he like almost instantly, like a month later, got like top twenty, I think. So yeah. he that's another one that just came out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah a, a, a gate was ridiculously good. Like, I've I remember, never heard of this player. 
You haven't? Never, Never heard Dude, of it. Gate was actually like one of the players where I was like, if this person learns how to play a little bit faster, yeah. he's just gonna get rank one. Like no one will be able to stun because he was like, basically imagine Kira, but I was gonna say Kira, Kira was this good. Yeah. yeah, basically like no one was matching, was matching his like low speed or mid speed. And on Ak he was also really good, but didn't play that much. I think Kira was like, compared to Kira played more Ak, now. yeah. yeah. But like it was yeah. actually like one of the players where I was like I I don't understand how this is real, and I did not know that origin story because I did not watch Simply Sabers. All right. Yeah. I really so, hope that Calvin keeps playing. That's yeah. yeah I wanted to get back to that. Let's okay. Listen, everyone, give me a date. What day does he hit rank one? Oh shit. Uh, let me look at what's how long does it take? Now? He's fourth right, right now, now. I don't think he can. He Honestly. he he went from seventh to fourth in in the span of ten days. I don't I around don't he... Christmas. Mm, he's still he's like six hundred behind right now. The, yeah. the fact I, is I think that around Christmas. It, it, it's all about it, it's all on him. Like I I'm not gonna give predictions because it he literally has to develop some skills to get number one. Like he can't uh, grind himself to number one right now. He has to learn new things. He learns new things super fast. He's great at it. But if you want to overthrow uh, like Maddie and Busy, you, you got to get that all rounder total greatness player that those players are. And he's working uh, on it. I think that's something that he's motivated enough because he likes the pressure of that kind of thing. I think that he's going to work towards that. And as soon as he puts his mind towards it and grinds that, he will, he'll get that. Beat so Boo I think is it's just exactly a matter of right. time doing that. Beat Boo is, exact, is exactly right. The, the key thing is jumps for him. He cannot do, I remember being in one of his streams. I gave him one map thinking he would chew through it because I had like a 92 on it. And he could, like, he struggled to pass it. Of course, it was uh, challenge stuff. Uh, and he's not it's ne necessarily super fast, which is one key component. But the second key component is that he's not great at, at, um, uh, at comboing and acting jumps. And jumps are so important nowadays uh, at mapping style in general. Because even if you go super high star tech, which is what gives you a lot of PPs, uh, nowadays, which is why he's so high in the in, in in the rankings. That's not enough. You you gotta learn that that basic style of speed mapping yeah. to compete say, with people like Simon Bang. Um, how is it, I don't know him well enough. How is his act? Because uh, just going off of Score Saber, like the the stats. I know the stats on Score Saber, like whatever. But like him and uh, the first place um, Silent Bang, they have similar ranked play count. But their accuracy is like very different, so I don't know if he's like good at like if he because a lot of players I know like once you hit a certain PP number, you kind of have to go back and act like mm. other maps to bring up the the score on yeah, it. And totally. like, is is he doing that? I don't know. Is he like? I mean, his his act is good, but I think he has a lo a lot of like old scores because he improved so fast. Yeah. So that like half of the scores are just like ninety ones and ninety two. Yeah, that's yeah. Like, if you, if you go to, to his top page, you can see like a 97A2 on Rainbow Tylenol or like a 97A6A8 on Common World Domination mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. Like the, the act is definitely existent. The thing is, he, he's, he, doesn't play the same, play stuff, he doesn't play the same stuff that Silent does. Silent is absolutely unbeatable right now on linear speed. Uh, he's just unbeatable like he has a, an accuracy level that is uh out of this world but right. uh, but but calvin hits shit and combos shit that silent bank cannot even dream of right well, that's uh, what i mean it's like that's like that's he's amazing but like that doesn't reward as you can't get as many points because you're not good at the other thing right like you can get all the points in the world you want from like tech that no one else can do but then if you want to make up the rest of the pp like you need to be able to act everything so Bicey is really good on linear speed, guys, but uh, I, I don't think, um, I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of different. I know he he beats Silent Bang on linear speed on some stuff, especially when it, get, it gets even faster. Um, and so does Aqua, uh, I think a, another player that, that, that can really compete at, 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 in that kind of mapping. 
But Sign and Bang is more, and I know it sounds crazy, more malleable in that sense. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about Sign and Bang in other days. We, we gotta go on. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Let, let's, let's move on to our story. Because, like, we kind of need to finish this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next map! Yeah. Next map, Pit. 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 Kingdom is Zoom, right? This was possibly also like potential ban. Maybe the one that you would go for if you thought when you. Oh, and which one was? It's the mid speed mid -speed, uh, map. Our story? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, we were not going to ban our story. Okay. It's interesting because that map. There's nothing I can do, chat. There's the nothing I can do. Yeah. It was. I, 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 there's nothing I can do. I just have to wait for it to pass. I don't know. I don't know what I can do. I'm good. I'm good. Hi. Wait, what are you saying to stream? Addition, what, what are you saying to the stream? Nothing. Nothing. Addition, what were you saying to the stream? Nothing. Don't, don't tell on me, you know, I'm, I'm gonna. Um, actually, it's so laggy, chat can't even understand you, so I might actually be safe. Oh no. I might, yeah, my Discord is having trouble. I don't know why this is. I, it's, I've it's i literally never had this. If you guys don't know, I'm on new internet because I moved uh, recently. But I got new internet now and it should be fine. I've never had Discord lag like this. I don't know I don't know is what it fixed? is. I'm very... Yeah, but it, it, like, it keeps going for like... It starts and then it's bad for a minute and then it's fine. Do you have cable internet? Yeah. Yeah, that's what it does. <laughs> what? <laughs> it, 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 that, that's how it is. It's 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 Germany, dog. You should try it sometime. It's really All great. Right. But yeah, we're back. Uh, um, what were we saying? We were talking about our story. And yeah. I I don't let, let's let's start from the beginning. I was uh, saying because I don't know if like people like, even heard me. Uh, I was saying that I expected this to be the potential other ban instead of 22, and Ryan said that it wasn't. Which is interesting, because this map was so close again. A score difference of only 500 points, with Maddie basically matching Pandita's score, both of them 0.2% ahead of the next place, which was cool pick. That was a ridiculous match again, because again, the UK was in the lead for I think the first half and then it went back and forth and I think they just couldn't keep the consistency high I think they had like a lot of people drop off if I uh, remember uh, remember that correctly um it was like I I, I want to know was anyone expecting this to be close this close I expected it to be close I wouldn't say that I expected it to be as close to them having an actual chance to win it uh, but we knew that our story was like probably the next thing. So if, if in case you're curious of, like what our other band was, I can't remember. Oh, it was um, it was Glory Road was the what? one that we were considering because they have players on the team that can do it very well. Like Matty, uh, Glory Road is kind of just like his kind of uh, like map playstyle thing. Uh, we have the mapper who's also very good at it, Aqua. Um, and then they they just had other people that could play it. Like we thought that as a team, we there was a chance that we may not do as well as them. But in the end, it, I think we still could have taken it. And I was like, I think we have a worse chance on the ACK map. So as we were And the further up you went in terms of speed, the better of a chance we had uh, of it not being close in our opinion. So. That's why we went with the slowest one. Our story, we thought we just kind of had, like, um, it was something that even if we did lose it, we thought we could take it on a replay. Uh, and realistically, we could have, like, same with the first match. Like, the one that we lost, we could have potentially replayed and won. So it's it's one of those things that it really just depends on the, the moment, like, who, who plays well and who doesn't. So, I don't know. Uh, did Coolpick underperform on our story, in your opinion? Uh, I don't remember what his score was. Uh, 96-4. Sorry, 98-4, of course. Compared to Pandita's 98-68. Point 0.2 behind Matty. And yeah. No, I think that's kind of what we expected. I can actually pull the sheet up to be um, around what we were expecting him to get. Uh, grand right. Finals. We have... Our, uh, 
Man, so United, he, United's he grand underperformed finals. a little bit. Um, right. A little bit. Like, he was getting around an average in 98, 4, 5, basically. Yeah. I think that's... So, that's within a, the error. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what you yeah. would expect. Uh, you know it's the grand finals when you have a mid-speed pick and uh, the last uh, player is Garsh with a 98-27. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Um, anyway, I, I think, uh, I don't know if you guys agree, but I, I think this is the map that sealed the deal for the Grand Finals. Uh, after this, it was kind of like uh, business as usual, kind of a wash, honestly. Uh, can you feel it? 8,000 points of difference, which is not much, but it's, uh, you know, you still had your replay, of course. Uh, it was uh, the last pick by the UK. Uh, and then you went on with uh, Daybreak and burnt rice where you guys just completely sweeped uh not even close um the first half of especially of this grand finals for me was mega entertaining which unfortunately i wouldn't i, I didn't expect uh because the us is always so uh dominant that um like it it, it, it you don't you don't expect it to be a fun match, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, well, I was I was saying earlier when I was watching in the car, um, the UK picked first, right? Yes. Or, okay. So they picked the they picked the ACK map and they won, right? And then the US picks through the Fire and Flames, and it looked like they were gonna the US was gonna lose through the Fire and Flames the whole song, except yeah. for the end. Um, and I don't know if they would have replayed. I, I don't know. Whatever. <clears throat> yeah, um, we would have. Okay. Right. And let's say they just lose, right? They replay and they lose again. Then they're up, UK's up two maps, and then they get to pick again. Like, do they, I was like, oh, this is a UK. like I didn't think they were going to win the whole thing, but I was like, is the UK about to be up 3-0? That'd be crazy. Well, the <laughs> third pick would have been USA's. Oh, right, because it's the way that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, anyway, yeah. But anyway, the p point being, point being I, was yeah. like, I was like, dude, the UK is going a little crazy right they now. They could have gone up 2-0. <laughs> Yeah. Which at that point, a lot of people in the chat would have started to be like, huh? Tell you right now, I was having a panic attack already. <laughs> I would have fucking died. Like, <laughs> I would have lost my mind with for a 2 0. I, I was confident that it, the match wouldn't would have ended the same way, but it was like, there was a point where I was watching, I was like, this could be like 2 0, 3 1. Like, what I am, honestly I, thought, am I looking at? <laughs> I honestly thought that we would get a 2 0 when like the mm -hmm. fire and the flames started i was so sure because like it, it was it was actually like they even had a good lead in the beginning yeah it was yeah, not just maddie was going nuts yeah. it was not just it was not just a small lead by like 0.2 percent or something they had a really solid lead that they just like they, at the end of it just like couldn't keep but I honestly was like, okay, we're gonna actually see two points like taken off them. This fly is annoying me. Uh, I'm sorry, you can't probably see it. I'm look, I look. No, you can't see it. <laughs> you might be able to see it. It's so annoying. Um, yeah, I, I honestly expected that, and that would have been wild. That would have been honestly. It, 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 people would have like. <laughs> been broke. I saw that. Right. <laughs> we we all saw that. I needed that content. I saw oh dog over God. there, and I was like, I need that. Dog. <laughs> I didn't dog. watch them. Um, but yeah. Uh, okay, well, I, I think this is a, a good lead for... Was this your favorite match of the year? And if it wasn't, what was? Magician. Oh, wait, I actually have to switch the topics. Wait, I'm not ready for this. I'm not... Oh I'm, not I'm not ready for this. It's been a while. We've been on this topic oh, for an sorry. hour. We're going. We're going. We're going. Sorry, I was. Yeah, we, I, we're, we're, we're running through. <laughs> My internet is having a funny oh. again, so just wait for a little bit. It'll be better at some point. I'll 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 tell you guys. I don't know why this is. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Um, I'll see if there's a way to fix it. I don't know if it's Discord, or if it's me. I haven't had these problems with this new internet connection so far so maybe it's the five webcams i don't know it's like it's not the best connection but it's it looks very relatively stable and it's not slow and it is only because on which it looks 
I'm I've tried changing the Discord much. server location. Uh, I, I haven't tried that. Where is the full combo server located, actually? Uh, Frankfurt. Frankfurt. That's kind of close. <laughs> Unfortunately. If you, click, if you click on the video connected thing, the server. I cannot understand what they're saying. It's just you and me, chat. Of course, because you can't see, uh, hear or see us. That's so stupid. Now I can see you again. Hi! Oh no, the region override on this is on, is on automatic. Should I just put it to something? Try just it. try that? Yeah. yeah. The, the weird thing is that we see you and hear you perfectly fine the whole time. Hi. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Like, oh no! Yeah, yeah, because he switched the server. Yeah, yeah. 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 It okay, ends we're in you perfectly, and then we're in Rotterdam. We're in Rotterdam now. Rotterdam. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, we're 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 gonna go through the next few topics like like that because yeah. the, this one, the grand finals, was of course the big one. Uh, but our favorite match, let's just name it and maybe tell tell us why. Tell us why, uh, magician. What was your favorite match? Can you hear us? Denmark, Canada. Of course. The one point. The one yeah, point the was one point. actually sick. The I'll just go ahead and say that was yeah. mine. That, yeah. I, I think the overall match, Denmark, Canada, also takes it for me. I do think that my favorite moments were in the grand finals, though. That is why I, I that to... is my pick. I'm gonna pick the grand finals. I just had so much fun. It it, it was it, the the whole time so hype. Also, uh, just just we we already went through that, but just to mention the tiebreaker, of course, absolute banger, and bitesy, yes, cat, and bitesy with the five miss on everlasting eternity, on a sight read, disgusting. Yeah. They had a huge combo at the end too. It was like two thousand, two thousand three hundred. Yeah, massive. Like uh, which, by the way, Daniel didn't think anybody would pass it, yeah. and I, I, after that, I had to, I had a, a bit of a an exchange with Daniel in DMs because it come it came to my attention that somebody passed it no pause, with super fast song already. Yeah, I did see so that video. SFS, like unfortunately, it's an unwatchable video because otherwise, I would have said like. <laughs> What are you doing? Send it to CC because it, it's impossibly cool. Yeah. And people in in Challenge Saber, I was like, "Did you see that? Is that isn't this amazing?" And everybody was like, "Yeah, it's a, like a level 20. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fine. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't did remember you, oh, the name see, of the guy. Did you see? I can. I have the video. I can post it. But did you see the the dude who did it on the unicycle? Again? Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, Kerbin. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got a crazy good score, too. Uh, uh -huh. Let me post this here before I send it anywhere. This is the one you're talking about, right, Gio? Uh, in the, in this, the chat. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Okay, I'll paste it in the... In the... It's this It's this guy, Operation, Operation Nori. Like, ranked, yeah. uh, I believe, 200-ish on Beat Leader or something like that. Maybe 100-ish. And he's, like, ranked what 18 or 16 in challenge saber and i posted the, the the video there like freaking the fuck out everybody was like yeah i mean it's, <laughs> it, it's a cheesed play sure it, it, it is very cheesed uh but still what, what the hell um, why is his head so stable it, it, it's it's a you weird can... it's a weird yeah. video you can it looks like he's on set... rails no, you can't set camera two up so that it doesn't rotate your head. Uh, oh, yeah. It looks yeah, 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 it looks very weird. But that it's, okay, it's, that's a ridiculous. You're not lying. That is not watchable. That is like yeah, that's, I, that's it's, yeah. yeah. It's just stuff happening. Yeah. It, it's unwatchable. But I had to watch like literally frame by frame on the ending streams because I could not believe it. And I did go th frame by frame. He actually hits those. Like it's not even because we've had like our cheaters, you know, even submitting to CC. I remember Mia and Estrella on the Q Cube Community uh, video chat going frame by frame on Devil Desu videos to confirm that he was cheating, for example. Um, 
Anyway, I, I'm going completely off topic. Sorry. My favorite was the <laughs> World Cup because it was very hype. My favorite was also the World Cup. I agree. <laughs> Fuck. The World Cup was really good. <laughs> Definitely the best World Cup Shut up, this Ryan. Year. <laughs> No, my favorite. It's very different. Mine was Japan versus UK because oh. I know I know that it wasn't like I know the UK should have probably won a lot sooner. And they were having issues and like whatever, but I no, think I it would have been crazy if Japan won <clears throat> and it changed the bracket. What we could have had, the things we could have had. No, the things that we could have had was like that uh, Germany wouldn't have gone up against Japan, yeah. <laughs> and instead we would have gotten our ass completely destroyed. Yeah. By <laughs> <laughs> so I'm happy it went like this, but yeah. I, I. Like uh, as as like a mu with a more neutral view on that, I agree that would have been funny. Because you the would have had uh, the UK and Canada both fighting for their lives in the losers bracket, which I think would have been. interesting. I feel like that would have made the loser bracket a lot less interesting, though, because then like yeah. that's fair. Like we wouldn't have had Canada versus Denmark, like stuff like that. That right. to me that would have been worse. I think the if if we're going on the pick of similar to like what Emma wanted. Germany versus Japan. Oh yeah, Wouldn't have that was yeah. actually fantastic. Yeah, such a fight. Nobody expected it. Uh, and and honestly, the reason why uh, uh, Japan UK, even though when I watched it, uh, I was super hyped. Uh, with the retrospective, I feel like it's not up to there for me just because the UK was, especially with the uh, now that we know, he was they were throwing so hard <laughs> like they were absolutely <laughs> trolling the whole way through that was like a farce <laughs> it shouldn't have gone that far yeah, so it is uh, what it is I, I mean i do agree that there were other matches that were way cooler like the one point or the grand finals was super yeah. cool but i just i like I, I was i can't remember if i was watching or i was hosting the japan uk tournament and I was, or the match and i was just like this is interesting <laughs> <laughs> this is gonna be stupid yeah so uh, all right. Uh, what was what yours, our MVP? What was yours, uh, Ixen? Have you, did you say it? I, 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 for me, it's difficult. Oh, you didn't? I, no, I, 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 what I, what I did, I, I said, like, I, uh, kind of agree and understand the Denmark Canada pick. For me, it's a bit difficult because, like, I have two kind of views on that. Because, like, the Japan-Germany match as a team captain with all the crap that happened with sharks coming in as this like <laughs> with a cape just flying in in the last map like i just you can't beat that for me personally like as a as a spectator i th i think uh probably the one point difference would like kind of make that match better but i like for me personally that my favorite match was obviously that one even though we lost because yeah. it, it was i i was dying i lost years of my life that time and i loved every second of that yeah. So, yeah. Well, that's kind of like with me. Like, I, I, if we're if we're picking like the most hype match, it's not Japan UK, but like for me, that's what mm. it was. So right, yeah. right, right. Um, our MVP, same thing. Okay. Real quick for me, Calvin. Yeah, I okay. No one say anything. Everyone tells us theirs, and then we start talking about it so we let's start with ryan then ama then ixen then me because Gio already said calvin ryan go gosh um i say busy i agree busy i also say busy so i i want to explain um for me choosing an mvp like is so much in relation to the team that I can't comfortably pick any US player. It's just impossible for me. And I have similar... an explanation for that. I agree. Yeah, I, I, I mean that, that, that's that's uh, like I'm I'm curious to hear it. But like for me, just like uh, Canada, if you like equalize the skill levels a little bit further so that you bring busy downwards, Canada would have like they have, would have been screwed, like really hard. Hard carry the fact busy. the fact that busy was on their team that was the only reason they made it the, uh, that far the only reason they, they got third was because busy was carrying like entire mountains on yeah. his back to, to be clear this is not a like 
slight at any other Canadian player, but no, this is no, absolutely not. It's just crazy. like he's, he's that much better yeah. than already good players. That's kind of where I'm uh, getting at. Also, Canada is very well aware, and they've told us yeah. multiple times, even on this podcast, that, that they have been highly uh, nerfed this year. They lost a lot of great players, and Busy uh, is still there. And at this point, to their admission, just on a completely different level from anybody else in Canada. The uh, student athlete, when uh, he was here, he just said it. Like, I asked, what about Busy? Busy is not like training or competing with anybody else in Canada. There's Busy and then there's everybody else, yeah. which is uh, the same for most of the world. Like there's Busy and then there's everybody else. <laughs> Unless you're in that like niche, s small group at the top of the world, you know? Yeah, I think that, um... Even in the beginning, there were a lot of people saying uh, Canada's not top three this year. They don't, they don't break in. They don't even get top six. I guess Some who said that? Saying, like, I don't know who. I don't know who could have said that. I don't. I really have no clue who could have said that. I think the, even in some of the predictions, I don't remember from the first episode. Whatever you guys said, the prediction. I think even in some of those, Canada wasn't in everyone's top three. So it's like, oh, definitely not. You know, and, I'll pull him up. I'm pulling him up. I'm pulling him up. What? I so that, I had like, Canada wait, on six. It's this, it's this Gio had him on four. Ixon had him on three. Ryan say, had him on six, and Seska I, had him on three. It's because I was pointing at magician, but on oh, for the Discord, record, that was qualifiers. That is yeah, that was qualifiers. That was qualifiers. That was, that was, that was no, I, I did not. Think I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. But it's funny. It it's funny to taunt you with it. But also busy but, then but, got the overall MVP for the qualifiers already. So. Yeah. Like it, it's it's hard to argue that busy uh, was one like one if not the best player on a technical level, like uh, on a competition level, like score wise, etc. Like uh, we discussed it a million times. He's extremely consistent. He grinds like a maniac. He cares about this game deeply, and he puts in the work like nobody else. He's uh, he has the, the 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 mental game. He has now the tournament experience. He's a menace. He's the best player in the world, on many many aspects. Uh, but uh, my MVP, the reason why I chose Calvin, is that Calvin was the most entertaining for me to watch, um, because some of this stuff that he pulled especially on the grand finals once again on Megaton Killer was just making me like pull my hair out. That's it. Yeah. So I'll continue Thank off you. that based on, uh, so I think there were three people that qualified as, as MV, MVP and it's the three people that we, we talked about. It's Garsh, uh, Calvin and Busy. I think Busy was the biggest carry and probably the most, inf I, I, it's hard for me to say the most influential on, on his team, but he was probably the hardest carry, which is, what i think why ixon says busy i think garsh was my pick or sorry calvin had the best plays in the tournament and then the reason why i picked garsh is because he's kind of more of like the underdog player who was not supposed to perform in my opinion the way he did came out and played i almost a hundred percent of the maps for the us not only that but did well on every single one of them like there were times where he was mvp on the maps like he carried the backbone of our team and shouldn't have so to me it would have been a massive loss to sure we would have probably still won but yeah. garsh was like the backbone of the team in terms of players and i i, I will never change my opinion yeah. and so you almost like, didn't pick him <laughs> yeah exactly as i said extremely underdog in that sense that talks measure uh, <laughs> for you as a captain mr caps <laughs> I'm it's, joking, uh, of course. well it's like it, it's like seska said it's kind of like the missing piece because it's like you try to fill all the people on your team well the usa has like a the luxury of choosing right but you try to fill yeah. your team with like all the people that fit all the different spots and i think you you need like a glue right? and like garsh has been there before and uh yeah. you know, he knows what you have to he knows like you know you have to be calm during the matches everything like that you can't like no you know extra emotions or anything so i think that if you told someone who didn't know anything about beat saber that garsh was washed <laughs> after yeah, the turn exactly. <laughs> they'd have been like you're insane like there's no, there's no possible way 
Yeah, some so some people that's, that's make great tournament players, and Garsh has always been one, and he has so much experience. And even if he's not up there in skill anymore, the fact that he has the mental game to play in tournaments carries him by so much, and it makes him perform so much better and so consistently better as well. It's so important. I After was, uh, so many years. I was impressed with um, how well Calvin played during the tournament too. Not not because he's not a great player, but because he hasn't... Has he done many other tournaments? None. That's no, his first yeah. tournament. So, I mean, it, it, there's a certain level of nerves, right, with tournaments, so... I was Especially if you're 13! <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Also, I don't think we've, uh, and I, I don't want to do it before we st finish this. I don't think we've mentioned Udon once in this yeah. whole uh, fucking thing. Yeah. And that's undeserved. Udon <laughs> is another player that's absolutely... Uh, Ryan told me multiple times that uh, without Udon, they were kind of fucked in uh, multiple ways. Uh, Udon is great. And, and now that he has some tournament experience as well, I remember when Udon started playing tournaments when he, st when he got uh, a computer. Uh, and he's a completely different play player since then. He, he has matured a lot on on a tournament sense. I think um, Udon was actually fine. underutilized. Like that's it, all I say yeah. about it. He was underutilized. This I, I think it's interesting um, if you've been in the Cube Community Discord for a long time, and you paid attention to any of the chats in your life. Udon has been in there. For, uh, Geo knows. Udon has been in the CC Discord forever, and if you have been there long enough, you can watch him go from a four-digit player, <laughs> posting his videos at four digits, and asking about grips and trying to figure out how to play better, all the way to where he's at today. So that's really cool. I have that like, like when I saw Udon, but he played last year too, right? So yeah, I saw him on the team last year. I was like. I was like, dude, that's crazy. It's kind of like this other situation I had with, um, this is like totally unrelated to Beat Saber, but so I used to play Osu a long time ago. And I, I like, I used to stream like way back, I streamed Osu 12 years ago before anyone streamed Osu, right? So like Osu used to have this page where you could see all the streamers. I would be like one of the only people on there. And so this guy would watch me play every day. And then uh, I was some player from the US. I helped him buy his first tablet. And then he played on the World Cup team, like the OC World Cup team, many years later. And so, to some degree, it feels the same with Udon, where like I've watched him like grow up, metaphorically. The player literally. is Emric. <laughs> no, 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 he's from the U.S. But um, so, I thought that was really cool, like to see Udon like literally going from like, how does a grip work? And here's I'm ranked fifteen hundred to, I'm winning the World Cup. So that's cool. I remember I like when that. Udon would. Um... I, I wasn't like there on the CC channel. Since I started playing uh, Beat Saber, essentially, I joined CC and never left. Essentially, I'm still like, I'm stuck in CC general to this day. <laughs> um, but Udon, for, uh, since I got there, he was already very good, but still on quest. So he couldn't post any scores. And he was constantly on uh, the, the, the PP flexing chat discussing with us. Uh, he was sending like, is this good? And then at, at some point he realized what was good and would send like pictures inside the headset to show <laughs> that he would get like some num crazy number one on ranked maps. Yeah. Uh, and it, there, there was this a small period of time, like a couple of months where he was supposed to get a PC and everybody was like, as soon as Udon gets a PC, he's gonna absolutely murder this game. And then he did, and he got uh, a, a spot into the that year's recap uh, for that very reason. He's absolute uh, skyrocket to legend. It's cool. It's one of those like feel good stories. Like if yeah. you know, if you mm -hmm. if you saw the whole time, like the whole thing, like him all the way through, it's like wow, here he is. And then like every good player that gets super good leaves CC because it's the same for Busy. <laughs> Busy you used to talk on CC like a lot and then got number one global. Now we don't see you anymore, Busy. I, I, I'm, I'm still there. Come back, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come back, baby girl. I miss you. <laughs> um, right. Maples. 
uh, I want to go uh, on a super quick retrospective on on Mapos because I I, I think it's uh, it's a rare Denya winning moment. So everybody <laughs> just clap for Denya. Denya, very good. Thank you, Denya. Rare, rare Denya. <laughs> <laughs> Denya's in chat, fucking freaking out. Danya, we we wanted to uh, you and the team, of course, but uh, you, as the head map pullers, uh, we're gonna refer to you. You did a good job. This map pool, th these map pools this year were fantastic for a number of reasons. Uh, I'll I'll speak as a as a viewer. They were fantastic to see. There was a lot of spectacle, spectacle. There was a, a lot of weird, batshit, insane, crazy stuff. Uh, but they were, were also very balanced, very well thought out, and they were all very good maps. Um, so, I really liked it. I want to hear from Ryan and Ixen as well. Unfortunately, we don't have players this time around. We have captains, but captains had to deal with their players. So, I, I, I'm sure you guys have uh, a lot to, to say about yeah, these maps. And, and we have, like, last year's like head map pooler as well with ryan which is also like i i'm, I'm curious that that's going to be a good perspective so i'm just going to talk first because oh, that's interesting um for me i also agree with that um i love the map pools this year i think they were very balanced i if i if i have a like small pet peeve it's that regular tech was underutilized we had a lot of crazy tech we had tech players on our team. I had other tech players uh, like I talked to, and a lot of them were like, I don't want to play the tech maps. And I feel like that's a little bit of a shame. I feel like a few more, like like there should be one regular tech map in every pool at least. Uh, but out of like the the rest, you know, if you look at it, I'm actually like, I don't have many complaints. Like I many complaints is good. Like many specific maps where I'm like, this is maybe uh, unfitting, but that's like opinions. You know, everyone has their opinions. I pre personally still think that like um, cheat reel is like a big no-no that shouldn't have existed. I personally am gonna stand <laughs> by that point forever. That map is not tournament fit, but um, else I'm I'm super happy with these map pools. Right, the same Ryan way. Feed caps. So yeah, um, sorry, I was like typing up a paragraph. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree. Uh, I think, I mean, I told Denya like privately that I thought he did a good job. He kind of took um, like my format from last year uh, and added the, uh, what do they call it? Uh, classic maps in World Cup. Uh, uh, he added the classic maps, which uh, obviously I was pushing for uh, since I put that in EUC. There was a lot of things that I was, before I became captain, and we were testing in EUC to try to push for uh for world cup so i'm glad that he kind of took a mix of what we did there and uh, applied it well here and i think there was a good balance overall uh between things like because there was high tech there was high speed there was classic uh but it didn't take away from the other stuff like it says something that when my comments for the pools are so nitpicky that i was talking about the types of act maps that go well together i feel mm -hmm. like that kind of says more than anything because i'm ver being very nitpicky rather than saying this map sucks ass why the fuck is it in this pool so uh like the only the only map that i think that we legitimately had a problem was was that map uh the the one josh map i don't remember who else was with it or i don't know if it was just josh or whatever like there was oh. one map that we had a problem with and then they fixed it i think i don't know i never went back and played it myself but the the players I mean, we didn't end up playing it but they didn't complain about it as much like because the map with the map just did not flow well like it, it sucked to play and we were going to ban it just simply because not because we were going to lose because no one wanted to play it and not because it was a hard map or anything like it wasn't like dimension wars or something or terminal missa it was just the map sucked to play like it felt bad uh but the team was super quick in responding to most of the feedback uh there was only like a few cases where some of the map pullers like responses were kind of annoying uh which is an improvement over last year, including with myself. Um, so I think overall it was it was pretty good. I, I think the whole map pooling team, um, we're saying we're just saying Denya, but like the whole map pooling team did uh, a great job. I think Denya just did a good job leading it and creating a format for the team to succeed. Uh, and whether or not he does it next year, I think that it still leaves a good just backbone of like a template of something that the next lead map pooler. So. 
I agree. Except for that one bit that I won't dwell on further anymore. If you know, you know. But overall, <laughs> you did a great knows. job. But overall, <laughs> you did a great knows. job, Daniel. Um, yeah, I won't. I, I will man. not. I will not continue to talk about it. Uh, I'm up. So please. like, it also like says so. After World Cup was ended, once Denya and his team had a break, I reached out to Denya. Um, since I, I mean, I'm no longer obviously the lead map player for World Cup. I still am the lead for uh, EUC. And I reached out to Denya. I was like, "Hey, you kind of want to co-lead this?" So obviously, I thought he did a good enough job to kind of help me since I'm trying to like not be as uh work oh, like overworked for <laughs> ec next year uh i was like i could use some help for the map pools so he's gonna be helping me a lot with uh with that so i think he he did a great job overall the fact that you survived the last year's EUC enough to want to do another one is already incredible in my opinion so i'm not, <laughs> not gonna comment further uh the the best map pool doesn't exist of course uh never will but considering how how little hate you guys received for your map pools because that's literally how how you how you judge how well is received is not how much praise you receive it's how little mm. hate you get because that 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 is the uh, thankless uh rough job of the map pooler which is why i'll never do it angry um, people are much louder than happy people so yeah in, in in anything, but Everything. especially map pooling, where you have to then play the map that you don't like, it's absolutely terrible. So, we uh, jump. Um, it's my internet again. Cool. Give me a second. G give me a minute, maybe. <laughs> I'll just well, spend Ryan this time so spinning this in my chair. Yes, it's a free, it's a free frame of very high quality, man. Yes. <laughs> uh, just, 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 since we're waiting uh, for it to come back, uh, we'll uh, next minute, we would, we would like you uh, to get a bit of perspective and future for Wolf in general. That's kind of what we want to get at. Magician! He's having fun over there. <laughs> oh, you're back! Hi! Are we? I was just... I Are was we? just... Yeah, yeah, I was just bridging time. Oh, cool. You're back, you're back, you're back. Hi! Hello. Uh, we were talking crap about you. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. It's fine. Uh, um... Okay. Did we... We finished this up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I forgot what I made. I, I I'm not I'm not gonna talk about it. What did you do? Nothing. What? <laughs> Nothing. What? Do you, why? <laughs> why Bintalin? <laughs> I mean, I won't be able to spot any uh, any syntactical errors. So exactly. good on you. Exactly. <sighs> well, uh, we would like to take this segment to ask Ama essentially. Uh, we've discussed the World Cup so far uh, at length, but if you have any finishing thoughts on the World Cup in general, uh, what went good, what went uh, wrong, and what if we have plans that are going to change, some, some things that are going to change for the next year, what we're looking forward to, and maybe even other CC plans in general that are not World Cup related. Yeah, so <clears throat> I think just to get it out of the way, I think everyone knows that the, especially the first couple of streams were rough. Um, we we tried to do the um, RTMP server for or very, various other methods for streaming rather than Twitch, and we did a lot of testing. Like I'm telling you, like people might not believe it, but we did a lot of testing and. It was fine and then it didn't work and we thought we found out what was wrong and then it was okay and then it didn't work again uh so eventually we decided to go to twitch um um what's his name his real name george by him george. yeah george. uh he jumped in and helped a lot too that was really good uh so i really appreciate uh him doing that he didn't have to but he did um uh 
So that was the worst part. I think everyone knows, everyone who watched it knows that's the worst part. So whatever. If that's the worst part, it's not that bad, to be honest. Um, so we fixed the streaming. It was okay pretty much after like, at, from like the th after the second week or like sort of during middle of the second week like after that it was fine so <clears throat> anyway that went well um we talked we just talked about it with switching map leads went well it was smooth uh, i think we've had we had koala and then we had ryan and now we have uh, and yeah and so just the what well, all three of them have been able to like set out for to follow i think a lot of people who have done map pooling could come in and be the map pool lead and like just follow the cookie cutter right and it would and it would mostly be okay um that not to say that you don't need a good lead map pooler but they've done a really good job with it um so map pooling is really good this year uh like we, we talked again we talked about it already but like angry people are allowed and happy people are not so when you don't get as many complaints that map pools suck or that like you need to replace like seven maps in a pool that's a win right um um we had a we also switched uh sort of switched lead coordinators to sir spam because uh, griggy had less time this year and he was helping out with more other stuff like merch so if you have a lot merch thank you griggy um so sir spam did a really good job with coordinating this year so that went really well um uh, magician came back and did casting again that uh, casting we don't really ever have problems with so like they, they've done everyone who's been casting and who like magician who like kind of coordinates them is like it's always like really good um <laughs> you happen to have four casters here that's incredible. right yeah exactly so <laughs> it's, it's almost yeah. like the, uh, the podcast is done by the people who are usually talking, right? talking a lot yeah it's almost as if <laughs> casting is in the word but um no it was really good everything a lot of things went really well this year but um there's always stuff to improve on we always have little things to look at um we we did we put out the feedback sheet yesterday so like if if you're not aware that it's out go in the world cup discord and click on the feedback sheet and go do it um there's been a lot of like misunderstandings with the feedback sheet or like people assuming that we like don't read it like i read it like six different instances like six different dates last year like I, I looked at it and like we got together as a staff team magician was there at least maybe geo was there too i don't know but i was um, there last year because i was actually going yeah. for like an hour-long walk and it, the yeah. meeting was longer than my walk yeah, it was. We looked at the sheet forever. We look at the rules. We try to readjust everything. Like people think we don't look at it. Like we look at it. So, no, and and I think the person that uh, that cares about it the most is Ama, who keeps tagging everyone in the staff ch uh, team chat to uh, give feedback on the yeah. feedback form yeah. to include all the questions. So I think I, I had to ask about three or four times to get responses for some people, but I didn't. I never did it. Sorry about that. <laughs> No, no, I, I, people are busy. It. It's totally fine. But um, I just want because like because what it boils down to is it's me putting most of the feedback questions in there, and I just I try to remember and I try to write things down as much as I can during the season. But I'm always gonna miss something, right? So I just want to make sure I'm like so that so that way. That's the wrong button. That's the wrong button. My bad. My bad. My bad. <laughs> That's the wrong <laughs> button. Uh, That's the wrong button. That's okay. great. <laughs> That's great. I just That's clicked on another VC. <laughs> 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 I thought it was a text chat. Nice, nice, nice. My man. Um, Jesus Christ, was, man. What was I just saying? I like actually lost feedback my form. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Feedback form. Um, go do that. Um. World Cup next year, uh, I don't foresee any massive changes. We, we put the question out every single year, or well, it started last year and it will continue. Uh, what do you think about team sizes, right? And maybe, maybe you guys can say what you think about team sizes if you want to talk about it for a minute. But uh, we always put the question out, should we lower the team size? Should we adjust the team size in any way? Should it still be eight? Should less people play? Like, so we, anything you want to say about it, you can say in the form. So um i think that four and eight is fine but i know that a lot of people say 
well there's not enough there's not as many good players in every country or like things like that so i don't do you guys want to talk about it for a minute or it's such a tough question for me it because it yeah. i i'm i'm really a fan of how you see did it with three six uh it worked really well it had completely different team dynamic and that's kind of important you know because at this point you have like a legacy of world cup you have how it works and that is the world cup competition at this point i'm not sure if changing it even for slightly the better would be a good choice just because there's this dynamic that formed for World Cup. Like changing six to three would completely throw off all the teams. All the teams. Um wouldn't make our job as lower grade teams. Uh magicianary magician cannot see us anymore. So that's cool. Nice. Oh, I feel like the Beats Ever World Cup live stream. Jesus, what the hell? <laughs> I don't think we're on. It's bad. I there's I, I, yet again, chat. There's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do. I just have to wait for them to come back. I'll just cut this out in the edit. So if you're watching on YouTube, you won't see this. I can hear that, Gio. I can hear that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> stinky, okay, you're back, stinky, you're back, stinky, you're back, you're back, you're back. Go on, go on, you're back, you're back. Go back. Hi. Um, you were talking about the so, so, three, yeah, six, you, four, eight. I think having less members in the team really makes the job of uh, us people in the back way easier. Because having four people that can play something when you have like 16 people that can play the game in your country is really hard. Uh, but I, it makes the job easier for everybody. So I don't think really it makes us, it makes it easier for us to qualify or anything. Uh, it would just make the team composition easier. So I, there are definitely plus, but again, I'm not convinced it should be pushed as a change just because the legacy of World Cup and the way, like for continuity, I don't think it mm. should be pushed. I so, I feel I... the same way. May okay, you no, know, Ixi, you talk about it a little bit, and then Ryan and I because we thought about this a lot before EUC. Yeah, but it's probably it probably makes sense for you two to like uh, have yeah, a yeah. combined. Uh, I personally think that like doing things because you did that before is like not a good way of going about it um because like if four versus four like if let's say the player base dwindles beat saber is not as popular you can't do four versus four anymore you, you won't have the player as it doesn't work right and i also don't think that necessarily four players playing and eight player teams is it needs to be replaced by three to six you could also do three players playing with eight player teams still yeah. that would make actually uh, lower grade countries like you know sounds bad but like you know what i mean you know players with not lower, a lot of like countries. lower tier countries yeah you can you so. can get <laughs> specialists in you can have more specialists like uh, germany had a true egg special we had yanni like putting her in was a difficult choice but if you have like three to eight that choice is easier for example right i um i'm not really sure if uh, like i didn't actually like thought think about this enough in a, on a world scale if it makes sense i think i'm for it I think I'm for uh, for that change, but I can't give it a comfortable and like confident vote. Hmm. Uh, before you guys uh, talk, I wanna just throw this in because DZ Ramen in chat says limit number of times each player can play to ab add a bigger strategy element. That's so interesting, actually. G guess uh, guess guess what tourney does this? The egg tourney that is in a couple of weeks. Cool. I have to cast it. I didn't know. Yeah, you should read the rules, Gio. <laughs> think, That's uh, actually uh, it's, it's a good point too, because there will be a future tournament. I'm not going to say anything else, but there will be a future tournament that does something very similar to that. That I think the general CC population will greatly enjoy. And I can't say anything more than that, but yeah. So Ooh. it's a good idea. Don't know if it's World Cup material or not. I will say so. Like. uh 
kind of going a little bit off topic i will say that like the the tournaments that have more strategy involved are the ones that i personally enjoy whether i'm playing or captaining uh that's why still to this day uh i, I didn't play any uc so i can't count it uh to this day cbt is my favorite tournament that i've ever experienced in uh beat saber like that tournament was so much fun to be in i mean yeah i like i was on the team that won so I, maybe i may be a bit biased but like the whole strategy aspect of it was so great like teams that were supposed to be how powerhouses just lost because they were like they, they put no strategy behind it. they just they it i don't know that's the kind of thing i like it uh it creates a little bit more balance uh between teams and like you actually have to use your head to win uh, instead of just blindly throwing players in that are supposed to be good at that and and winning um but that's that's sort of why like and going back to the point like making changes i think is okay like i don't think it has to stay 4v4 the the one thing uh i don't want it to be based on and this is both biased and unbiased it should not be because the it will bring other teams closer to the us that is an incredibly stupid reason to make yeah, no. a yep. change and I, um, and, I, and if you read the quick if you read the feedback form yeah. on that question it very specifically states because i wrote in there this is not to nerf the u.s like yeah you shouldn't be basing your answer mm -hmm. on because you want the u.s to be worse or you want other teams to be closer to the u.s because it takes away the advantage because in the end of the day in my opinion i'll let you guys continue but in my opinion yeah. it should just be do you have the best players for world cup do you have the yeah. best players yes but i'll talk yeah. more about the uh like uh strategy based stuff i'll let you guys finish but i, I like that too so yeah so i i like that's kind of like i don't think a strategy based thing like that for world cup is the best form because i definitely agree with what you say like it should be the best players in the world it shouldn't be the the point of the tournament should not be to go and have upsets like sure great uh, uh like upsets are great sometimes like the, it makes for a fun viewing experience but like just think about like how hard some of the the players work like for the uk for example like if they lost against japan like how hard they worked this year to be the second best team and they they lost in that and it's like that's just kind of humiliating on their part which sure like it was mostly because of tech issues it's not like it, it i don't know having it for that reason is is kind of annoying and then kind of transitioning to like the three three bit like euc the reason why magician and i pushed for 3v3 was because uh, multiple reasons but one of them being we're hitting just europe so there's going to be teams that are going to have a shot that don't usually for world cup and they may not necessarily have enough to have a 4v4 yeah italy exactly uh for a full 4v4 team uh it makes it a little bit more manageable for us and then like as a team composition it's it's so much different than a 4v4 and like i kind of agree with ixon because we talked about this in the CC meetings last year, back when I was still like on that team, about making it a three and eight tournament. And I was one of the people that pushed for that at the time, uh, because like I said, that was one of the things we were considering EUC. Like all the all the feedback that I had for CC, I just put into to EUC. And, so, and same with uh, Magician as well. We wanted to try these things out. It was a very low risk thing to do uh, compared to like changing the entirety of World Cup. Uh, but I mean, I, we did three six, right? We didn't do three, three six, yeah yeah so we chose three six mainly because of the it not being the whole world basically uh and we may so we may change it to three eight at some point i don't know i think three six worked well for us um so i i i think since beat saber is kind of smaller and like it would be a kind of a different tournament to have a 3v3 um i i i I don't know there's like there's pros and cons of both in my opinion i i like the 3v3 format better but that may just because i'm biased on each uh part of it i do like having the ability of like what ixon said about for for world cup having having the option to have all eight because then you can have specials like you said like maybe in this case we would have had a pulse on the um just people that that get overlooked for I, I think this is mostly a usa issue unfortunately maybe like uk um it's the other but, way around for everybody else. <laughs> yeah, they're like, we're trying to find people. Uh, but it's like, yeah, it's, it gives it gives you more room to work with. That alone will make you strategize. It's like, we would have to pick a team that can beat a 3v3 in 
against the UK, against Denmark, against Canada, like that kind of thing. Like a lot of our mindset going into this map, these matches, and like this was like this was from a casting standpoint. I can't tell you the amount of times that Mijio, Magician, uh, like we talked about. Oh, the US is just gonna win simply because they have four people. Like, you could have great people like Maddie and all the other stuff on the other teams, but if you don't have a team of four, what do you do? Yeah. And this is so. this is kinda like uh before Magician talks, what I also wanted to say earlier. Uh I agree it's like who has the best players, but I, I like if it goes into who has the most players right. i think yeah. that's a bit of an issue like you know that, yeah. that's kind of where we need to look at because like if you if you go in and you're like okay uk can beat the us in ag but let's make a 10 versus 10 suddenly the uk just dies you have no chance anymore because you just don't have the player base right so it needs to be kind of balanced in that regard and it, like it's a it's i think it's difficult to actually like give this a balanced uh, answer um I don't know. Like, I, I, I feel like it's, it's like, in my, in my opinion, it, I feel like it would be a bit, like, better from a uh, tournament perspective. That's kind of how that, I feel like it. I think a lot of math would have to go into determining tr truly if it's correct to go down yeah. to three from four. Because you, you would have to collect all the data on the 25-ish teams that try to qualify every year. Um, who, like, what rank are the people? What scores are they getting? If it was 3v3, would it be more comparable? Because, uh, like, yeah, it's the best players, but like you said, you don't want it to be more players. You don't want, just because the US has that fourth player, like, do 24 teams have three players that could all compete with each other? If they do, yeah, maybe that's correct. Maybe you switch. Um, but I think that each year so far that we've tried to think about it, it's just come down to, well, we don't have enough data to say truly if it's better to switch or not. So to be safe, we'll just keep it. You know yeah and uh, kind of going off what you're saying too i, I like what and ixon's agreeing in chat going off what uh Seska said maybe it's the other way maybe you don't go down uh the the number of people that are playing at a time maybe you go up with the number of people that you have so you be can a nightmare have... for me but okay well, <laughs> yeah. I w I, that would just I, I like i would show up with nine players because i literally cannot find a tenth <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I it think would, that would like that is a problem fix. for some of the for, yeah. the for some of the like barely qualifying teams. But like, if you think of the top X in yeah. uh, US, UK, Germany, or maybe not Germany uh, with some people that don't <laughs> want to play more, but, uh, <laughs> Finland uh, for that example, uh, I, the list can kind of go on. There. I'm sure Australia would be in the same thing. Uh, I don't know if I said Canada, but like that could be the type of thing where it's like, oh, that could balance the teams out a little bit more because then you can play, the other teams can play those specialists to try to beat the US. It, it gets them a little bit closer, but right. it like it, it can go either way. I think I think there are options to change um, that could make it better. It's just, it, it's gonna be time to kind of mess with things to get it like to the point where we know what is the best. I wanna hear what Magician thinks and then I'm gonna add one last mm. thing that I think. Um, yeah, I agree with uh, Ryan on the fact that the main reason EUC went to 3-6 is not to, yeah, we need to get, we need to have it be closer. We don't want the UK to win as easily, so we have to have it be only 3-6. England. Sorry, I yeah, England. Say, you, you I, said, I make the mistake as well. I make the, the mistake as well. Yeah, that was, a, canter today. that's the way we, that's the way we nerfed you guys, by by splitting you up. Not by how many players you can send. <laughs> um, I personally don't think increasing the team cap from eight to even more makes sense. I what I, what I the idea that I just had was what would a four six World Cup look like? That'd be horrible. Uh, I'm not too sure. Many, too yeah. many categories. That that would be absolutely terrifying for no, us. But in, indulge me for a second, because what would you need to change? You would need less specialists. You need yeah. more generalists, and that's even harder for people that don't have enough players. And it's mm. even easier for people that have a ton. I, mm. I think that you would need, like you say, you would need less. You you would be able to fit less specialists, which would in turn mean that as a as a tournament organizer, you would have to condense the categories, right? Mm. 
in order if you were trying to balance it you would have to right you have to condense the, the categories into more general categories where you don't necessarily have truac and you don't necessarily have high tech right or high mm -hmm. speed or high there's speed, also right? like the idea of like from a viewership standpoint like obviously the tournament is made for like figuring out the best team in the world but like from it, it also the viewership matters as well and i think having a team that's the same players because like if you only have there two subs uh, you have the same team every time. You don't get to see the top players in the world in specific things because you have to remove them because mm -hmm. they can't play speed. Yeah. Like this on a team uh, on a team with six players, I don't think I could put Pandita on a team. Right. Of course, I agree. Of course, and and, and this is why um, I say at the I said at the beginning that it's really tough to touch World Cup in that sense, and, and it's not because I don't think it should change if it's for the better. What I'm saying is that for now, the World Cup, in my mind, lives free as if it's sports, the World Cup is the Olympics. That's how it feels like to me. It's, uh, it, it has team effort, it has team composition, but it's a showcase of personal skill with a touch of, but not a lot of, um, uh, strategy involved. There is some people like Dracono make it work like super well. Like they actually capitalize on that. And by the way, if you want to get on to the numbers, onto the math of how to make it more in a direction toward, less, rather than another, call Dracono because Dracono has the, the spreadsheets for you. Yes. Um, while you see, felt more like... Uh, Fucking, and I, now I have to look for another sport, and it's super, it's super hard. But it felt, it felt way more strategic on our team side. I, I actually played on UZ. Uh, it was super mega fun, just because I managed to get a team in. <laughs> we didn't last a long time, but for the time that we lasted, it was amazing. Um, and even compared to World Cup, where of course Italy never qualified for World Cup, but we still did all, all of our strategies in our head anyway. Uh, it felt way more calculated in that sense. Um, but I, I think at the same time, it kind of diminished the uh, that that aspect of like the greatest player in the world competing. It's more of a strategic effort uh, and a team effort. Um, I, I really don't. That's that's why I'm saying touching World Cup is tough because it has such a uh, a legacy and uh, a continuity that can be continued in this matter, and it, it's working philosophically speaking almost in my head. Like it already works so well for what is trying to accomplish that uh, manipulating uh, the kind of tournament that it's that that it is uh, after years that it's in. It can be done if it's for the better. Absolutely, do it. But it's I think, yeah. dangerous. From, <laughs> from the organizational perspective, it's scary to think about drastically changing how the tournament functions, um, which was in part why I was glad you guys did EUC the way you did. And I, I made fun of you at first for it, and I hope no one took it the wrong way, but I was like, <laughs> oh, this is, just, this is just World Cup with the changes that they want and no America. And like it was kind of like poking fun, but I'm glad you did it because <laughs> we can't like we the World Cup. And I, I say we can't, but like World Cup, it's it's scary to make a big change to World Cup because then what happens next year? Everyone hates it, and it's like, why did you change this? It didn't have to be changed, you know. So that's always going to happen, regardless of the change. Oh, by the way, I, I know, yeah, no, even like, the small even, things, yeah. <laughs> That, like that's a grant that's one thing that you can give for granted if you change world cup in any way at this point you're gonna get hate for it that's always gonna happen even if the change is almost objectively for the better like if you get a change that 90 percent of the people think it's amazing that 10 percent is gonna kill you yeah of course but, but yeah no i think that there's always changes we can make and maybe there is a better way to do team size um we just have to we just have to look at it every year and Decide what's the best to do so can i bring up something else uh in terms of like a change in sure. uh world yeah. cup we're talking uh, about world cup for next year so yeah. yeah so 
this was a survey that was given to team captains at the beginning, I think, before around I don't I don't remember when. It was like around when qualifiers were or whatever. Yeah, but sure. it was in discussion about the uh the showcase map. Yep. And there were three options given to all the captains basically saying like, oh, we can do it the way it was before. Um, it happens after the match if there's no tiebreaker. Otherwise, it's a tiebreaker. Yeah. Um, the U.S. didn't want that, but I don't necessarily think one of those three options is the only way to do it either. And mm -hmm. I think it would be way more interesting both for the artist and uh, the players and the art and the the, the mapper or mm -hmm. whatever for everyone. Uh, yeah, if, yeah. if the song actually mattered in the pool. Uh, sure. You can still do the whole showcase thing. Like you can have any graphic video that you want before it, blah, blah, blah. Like the whole thing could be the same as this year, but just give it to the players. Like don't even make it a sight read, give it to the players a week beforehand, make mm -hmm. them like, I mean, you can only do this so much, but that's the same with the, the mappers as well. Make them like NDA basically, like they can't share the map. They can't expose it in any way sure. and then put it as part of the map pool and make it as an unbannable map. Or that, that, make it that as was, the first map. That was not the first one, but uh, yeah. putting it into the pool was an option on the survey. Yeah. And, it did and that's get actually some what answers, we but. that's what we picked, I believe, uh, was that it was just part of the pool. And if it wasn't picked, yeah. it was just played. Uh, I think we actually picked the one was that if it wasn't uh, picked, you had to win that. Like you had to win on that map, I think. is what uh, Yeah. Mean. So the yeah, so the three options the, for anyone who isn't aware, because only team captains and some staff members were given this. But so the three options, because we were thinking about this a lot beforehand. Um, uh, the tiebreaker map, the special map, secret map, whatever you want to call it, would stay the same. No change. It's a tiebreaker. And if it's not a tiebreaker, you play at the map at the end of the match, which is what we did this year, ultimately. Um, or it was an unabannable map in the pool. So it would just be in the pool and you can't ban it, uh, which doesn't necessarily mean that you would pick it because you have the option to win before it gets picked. Uh, and then in that case, you would play it at the end as a, as a showcase. Same thing as this year. And then the third option was that what Ryan was just saying is if you get to match point, whoever gets to match point, that map gets slotted in to match point. So no matter whose pick it is next, whatever, that would continue after this map gets pushed up from tiebreaker to match point and that was more interesting for us on a viewer uh standpoint like uh, sorry i'm being cold <laughs> uh um so that was more interesting for us in the in our heads on a viewer standpoint like oh like the match point is coming up now they have to win on this like secret map or whatever um so those are the three options we gave there's an infinite number of other options that can be given but that's that's where this discussion comes from i i know of course it's irrelevant at this point and it's probably going to be irrelevant for for a while but um because the us is such a menace but uh, while it's very interesting on a, on a uh, on a viewer's perspective that last option i don't know how much i how how i feel about it uh, I think on, a, we, on a competitive I, 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 perspective you, you can't you can't do it honestly it's just like it's not yeah. it's not possible to be done without favoring the speed team because that map is always going yeah. to be difficult as hell it, it it is basically the culmination of world cup of the best players and it's going to be a ridiculous map every single time that's that's so what i'm can't, saying and you can't force people to play it without it getting picked you can put it in the map pool as a speed map i don't see the problem Having it as a side read, pickable, I don't really see a problem with that. I think that's also a skill set that is completely undervalued in tourneys. Yeah, we had yeah. Hidden Sabers. I love that tournament. Seeing players side read maps uh, when they have to is great. I, I don't think that would be a problem either. Um, I think that the reason that we were skeptical on that option, um, and just so everyone's aware that that option only received one vote out of 15, um, the reason we're skeptical on it is because of that while while sight reading is a valid skill set it is not represented in the entire tournament except for yeah. that map so we that were is, yeah. we were like we're gonna get a lot of hate for this because if we if we just forced it we didn't ask anyone because just like everything else in the map pools it has to be represented somewhere in another map pool or else what is the reason it's here yeah right? I, I think there's also an issue with having an unbannable speed map like sure that, that, like especially if it's the fastest in the pool and you can't ban it and then like that's kind of unfair towards the team that wants to ban the speed map, i'm right? gonna be honest 
I, I agree okay. with Ryan that having it at the end is uh, like not as interesting as having it integrated into the pools. But I, I feel like it's kind of an unsolvable problem on a competitive standpoint. It is. I think I think the biggest like I agree. I hundred percent agree with that. Uh, I think the problem is is that we have this stigma that it like has to be an extremely hard. Like mm -hmm. we go in and we get this insane like hardcore or hard style artist or or whatever, just like rhythm game music that yeah. is going to make an extremely hard map. I mean, we had some of the for this one, we had some of the most like challenging like speeder and tech mappers make it. It's going to be difficult. I don't think it needs to be that like the point of it is to have an artist bring art to this and it'd be a surprise for everyone be i mean this is extremely biased by end because i hate rhythm game music. so it's, it's, it being specifically that i'm never going to be interested in the song i will never once listen to any of the cc songs that have been released last wish was cool because cry came back and did it i personally think the song is not listenable for but that's just because I don't like that style of music. He did a great job with it. It's in, it's great for the genre that he does, but it's not my type of thing. So I think like if we were to add it, it, it doesn't necessarily need to be bannable. Um, just put it in the map pool as a normal map. Give it to the players to practice. You can ban it if you want. If not, it's a showcase map, sure. And then it doesn't have to be an a, an unbannable speed map. It can be an unbannable map, or it can be a map that can be banned. That can be any type of map. Just most likely not an act map because that's not as uh but that's just that's my opinion i don't know if people are going to agree with that that's just something that i think that could be discussed it's i would love it i would love it to be an egg map next year that'd be fun <laughs> that'd be great just a true yeah. just a true egg map no like, not like uh, true egg, but give me like a five, so five notes funny, per though. second I, just imagine like a, that's that's not egg but like imagine you have like a like you have like the the culmination of World Cup and it's just like I, 0. I know 9, man it's zero point nine screen. notes per second. I'm sorry, <laughs> and people are playing it as a match point. Just like, like yeah. I understand the principle that Ryan is coming from, but at the same time, I'm sorry guys, this is a rhythm game, and I, that that hype that you get with an incredible difficult map played by incredible skill skilled players. That map is still in the pool though. That level of wow, yes, but it, at, at that point, the problem that Ixen says is gonna say the same. It's always gonna be a speed tech map, speed tech map, or crazy speed, or speed tech. Like that's that's a problem that it's gonna stay. If you wanna keep that level of mega hype, like I I wouldn't wanna give that up. If that if next year is gonna be an act map with a, an act an act kind of song, maybe it's amazing. Like I love songs that go for act maps, but it's not gonna be the same level of crazy hype that you get for the the last type of i don't know man i think it's, it's an uns a, a legitimately unsolvable yeah. problem yeah i don't see how to solve this it's because you have a lot of uh like objective things that are going like into decision as well like yeah. from a objective standpoint like regardless of what the song is blah 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 i think it should just be part of the pool I don't think it's something that should be forced as a tiebreaker because even like you said tight reading is not part of the rest of the tournament neither is a forced tiebreaker sure. like yeah just yeah. put it in the pool regardless of what it is and allow it to be banned and then if it is banned you play it at the end just yeah. honestly i think th i think the only reason why that last fact that you said the fact that it's a, a forced tiebreaker has never been a problem before uh, like contested yeah, is exactly. only because you never get to the tiebreaker because the exactly. is too strong otherwise it would be contested, and I would agree that it's stupid. <laughs> it shouldn't be uh, a forced tiebreaker. Um, it's it's a difficult decision from a stat like a higher like staff standpoint because so some backstory I suppose. The first time we did the special map like with Camellia, I didn't plan to do it. Um, it whoops had a connection with Camellia at the time. And he brought the idea to me with the ability to get in touch with Camellia, right? Because I, I wasn't thinking about it. I honestly wasn't thinking about it. And it was the same year, I think, that Camellia did the one for Osu. So it was kind of like, you know, whatever. Um, and when, we, <laughs> when, when, we, when we did that, uh, I like the song a lot too. But So when we did that, um, it was just kind of like this cool thing where like, all right, that was sick. I don't know if it happens next year. We'll see. And then we tried it again with the Winter Cup that year, um, which 
it went it was fine but I, people didn't like the song as much it is what it is those timers um, right yes um whatever we're not gonna talk about it <laughs> but some people liked it some people didn't cool i don't it doesn't matter um and so then it, it kind of just ended up becoming this thing that we do and admittedly it is more for the viewers than it is for the players i think everyone that plays understands that right it's yeah. it, it's not it isn't fair forcing a type picker isn't fair doing the other option where we put it in the pool and it's not bannable isn't fair making you play it for um a match point isn't fair like we we, we know it's not fair right but to some degree world cup is a spectacle right and i i never want to put the viewership before the players because at the end of the day the players are the reason we have the tournament but so you have these two rocks colliding with each other where it's like you want to be fair to the players but you also want to put on this like cool thing for like because it's not just cool for the viewers it's cool for the artists that gets to come on and do it. it's cool for the mappers the players that get to play it at the end for fun like it's cool like people like doing it right um so it is kind of like just it's kind of this unsolvable problem where the only real solution is to take it away and i don't know if everyone would like that so listen the year the u.s fumbles <laughs> and it it's like close no yeah. i will vote for it to be a showcase map after yeah. the thing is done yeah I, I i i love the uh the event of a map uh, made for World Cup that year. I think it's the one of the coolest event. shit. It's, I, I know for you, I'm a, it must be so unfortunate that Whoops had that idea because like it, it's a, <laughs> now it's, it's the hardest Some kind weird. of tradition to go on is having a full on song and then map and then lights. And every time you have to, of course, up yourself because, yeah. and it's the same for, of course. Well, luck uh, luckily, everyone has been really that CC do. Yeah, yeah. Luckily, everyone's been really cool about it. Everyone yeah. is like all the mappers, all the lighters. I say all the lighters, Alice. All, all the Alice. people, that, <laughs> all the people that we ask to do this stuff every year, really cool about it. They really enjoy doing it. And some of the artists that we've had um, really, really like doing it. And like, I'm sure Cry will tell you all about how, like, Last Wish has like changed the way he makes music and all that stuff. And so people have like a really good experience doing it. So I like doing it, but I know it's not fair. I, like I know the I know, I know it isn't fair to the players. I know that, but like it's 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 really fun. So right. that's why um, I think like it it, it kind of is the best. Like you don't have limitations on the map. You make it like it's the same as every year. And if you just put it in the pool, it it, it you don't have to remove the showcase. Like because you can like I said before you do. Like everything he does, which is not at the very end of the map. Which I, I think the internet warning. I'm cutting. I'm cutting this out. I'm cutting this out for the YouTube one. <laughs> I definitely. I'm definitely gonna forget. Actually, I'm not. I'm. It's not. I might get some of them. I'm not gonna be able to find all of them. I don't know how many there were. Uh, I'm just gonna awkwardly stand to the right. camera until they're back. <laughs> we might be back. We'll never know this, but not talking. Right. <laughs> 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 Nightmare, 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 nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Magician is bad, magician is bad, magician is bad. We're back! Hi! 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 But yeah, um... Oh, I was just gonna say, so like kind of as like a... Just to wrap up, because it's, you know, whatever. Um, I think that putting it in the pool and giving it to the players is also not a terrible option. Um, the only concern is that everyone streams everyone has a discord like uh information on everyone's got all this like publicly available you know I'm, i get worried that someone will leak it uh when we give it to 16 to 20 more people um but i don't know it's, it's that that is a good option though putting it into the pool and allowing the players to have it and see it uh beforehand because again as we've said multiple times it isn't 
for the players. They like it and they think it's cool, but it's not for the players. So having it be like spoiled a week early is probably not a big deal for those that are playing. So I don't know. That's a good option. Uh, you know what? We should have uh, the uh, musicians uh, on the podcast at some point. That'd Speaking be- of which... Uh, FC Podcast, ladies and gentlemen, that's that's been us. Uh, and now that the World Cup is over, uh, we're gonna be dead and never do podcast ever again. I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're actually. <laughs> I'm very sorry about that. We're we're actually gonna keep doing it. Um, after a, a little bit of a break, I have to go to Turkey. Um. I don't know what you guys are planning to do by the end of the summer, but this is my first uh, week of break since the beginning of the year, and I have two. This one and the next, and then it's going back to work until uh, uh, until uh, Christmas. So uh, I'm going to enjoy these two weeks away from my computer. Um, but after that, what are we going to do? I think, well, we've talked about this this a little bit. I, I think we're going to be moving to, at maximum, every two weeks. The Once a week was possible during World Cup, but it's not sustainable. No. Not for our sanity, not for the amount of content. Like, putting... We'll find something to talk about for, like, three hours. That's not a problem. I mean, every time but... we are like, no, this time is going to be different. It's almost two... It's always two and a half hours. So <laughs> Here's my as an outside like I have nothing to do with the podcast. As an outside person, I think that um, sometimes people just like listening to the people talking. Yeah. Um, so if you have enough viewership that likes you to watch or listen or watch you talk about random stuff, you could go week to week. It doesn't matter. Uh, but if you if the if you're trying to keep everything topical and have an hour or more of on topic discussion. You probably do have to do less. So. For our sake, we'll not be able to do week for week. Yeah, yeah it's it's not about the content. It's okay, mostly well. about the stress of having to find guests for every single week, come up with stuff to talk about for every week, and then find a time as well every week. Mostly because uh, now that World Cup is ending, uh, we're going to have to find more actively stuff to talk about. Uh, Because it's not going to happen in front of us. Of course, uh, uh, all three of us uh, are really involved with the tournament community in general. Uh, Like uh, I was discussing with Magician like last week and I casted something next week, not because I'm in Turkey, but the week after that I I have another and the week after I already have another like that that already booked. So we have tournaments to talk about. We have players to talk about, but we would like to also introduce stuff like uh viewer suggestions uh q and a's um and have people get on to talk about maybe what they do in the community i'd like to i would like to talk with modders i would like to talk with uh uh artists uh with mappers with there's a lot to talk about and we clearly always have a problem that we talk too much and not too little so i don't see that as a problem good, going good, forward good problem to have sometimes yeah exactly so uh, yeah, and having more special events, just got, at the same time though, it means that every time that we do it, it's a special event, and doing one special event per month is tough. <laughs> so we gotta balance it. Um, I do think it's good to have like a like since I'm not actually part of this podcast, uh, it's good to have like uh, the CC channel kind of alive uh, more than just World Cup as well. Um, yeah. Especially since I, I don't know if Winter Cup is going to be a thing this year. I feel like Winter Cup is probably postponed for a bit now. Um, we haven't, a uh, little spoiler, we haven't discussed it to any great lengths because I wanted to give Jive a break. Uh, but yeah. we skipped it last year as well. And I'll be honest, I don't know if it's going to come back uh, ever <laughs> until we find a way to do tournaments without as much manual uh, work because yeah. it's a lot to go like i mean we spend some people in staff here at you've known like we've been working on world cup since like april so i mean that's four months out of the year yeah five, five months if you count all of august it, you know it's because we're still doing stuff and then 
to prepare for Winter Cup, we have to start like now. <laughs> so it's... I co I completely understand. Yeah. You you don't have to tell me twice. Yeah, I completely yeah, right. understand. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I that's why like having having little stuff like this, like that's the type of thing I'd miss so much. Like this isn't relevant. I'd miss uh wow, what is it? Uh, why am I blanking on his name? That's enough to explain. Uh Interest? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, miss all the random I would have guessed the same thing, yeah. Just, I was gonna say there's only one person that you can actually like name here. Yeah, uh, I miss all the random shit he did because like it kept the like small community stuff alive. Like you don't have to keep doing insane like special events but just keeping the channel alive i think is pretty good especially because like it just keeps people aware that it's there like and i overall our view our, our goal is to increase the viewership of beat saber like to get it across as many platforms as possible so people are aware of the game the hard work that people do like that kind of thing so i think keeping it alive for however long like consistent is a good thing. and uh, by the way i uh, i think it's gonna seriously be a good uh, occasion to talk about tournaments that are going on all the fucking time. Believe, like I'm, I, I, th I think at this point it, I'm the single member of the community with that is it, it has their hands in most most tournaments at this point. Just because I cast everything, because I, 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 I wanted to grind this year. This year was my my grinding year for casting, so I went all in and I wanted to cast everything. There are. A lot of tournaments going on, so many that people think like, uh, yeah, when uh, now that Winter Cup uh, is no more, like we've got to wait next year for World Cup. There's a shit ton of stuff going on at all times. It's not the same level of professional quality as World Cup for sure, but there are some that are really, really interesting. Coming up, for example, I think the first week of September, could it be? It's a Beat Saber Parents Tournament, their, their second one. It was such a blast to watch. Uh, it's the parents of Beat Saber players competing against each other. And we've had like 96s, all right, from senior citizens. It was awesome. They're uh, better than me, dog. I can't handle this. Just, <laughs> better than me. <laughs> like, legit, like a, a, like a 60 year old lady getting 96s on act. Like, no joking, it was awesome. Uh, Watch out, people. Me and my mom will be joining the next one. <laughs> Seriously, you're in? The, uh, yeah. Oh, sick. I the only I reason that I didn't do uh, this upcoming one and the one before was because my mom was having health issues and she wasn't able to play. She's actually really good. Like, <laughs> actually. <laughs> no, Noam's mom is super good. Uh, Scuff tourneys just happened uh, last weekend. Uh, was a, a tournament where all maps are down notes, only down notes. Uh, so double the BPM for every map. Interesting, like random concept, but that's the idea of these small tournaments. They run on one weekend uh, from a couple of people that need to learn how to do tournaments and they do it. Ranked Saber, which is a, a, a Different system of ranking uh, maps, I believe, are uh, running a tournament. Uh, Beat Saber Saturdays, I believe, is uh, coming back, which is the Challenge Community uh, tournaments. Those are uh, a blast to watch and an absolute, an absolute nightmare to work for. Uh, I, I, but I like it. Uh, like, uh, tournaments that uh, go on Beat Kana, and look, there's always a tournament going on almost every weekend from this community. Even though it's smaller than it was a couple of years ago, it's pumping. Like, there's a lot of like going. country, like a lot of countries have their own discords and I feel like they don't get enough uh, visibility in terms of the tournaments that they put on. I'll say as someone that has been asked a map pool in so many different fucking tournaments, I, I had to stop saying yes to them because I just did not have the time. Uh, but, like, Beat Saber Canada, for example, puts on a great tournament every year. Three divisions. It's yes. so hard to do that. Like, yeah. It's, so if you guys don't know about that, you should watch it. It's, it's cool. sick. Yeah, it's they awesome. It. They do it, it. Like, they're really into it's it. It's unfortunately, like, like, in the middle of the night. For I know because I cast it. <laughs> for, for cast it 4 a.m. every time for the Canada <laughs> But, like... Belgium does a tournament, Germany does a tournament, like all these micro communities, like these countrywide communities have tournaments that they host that 
uh, they just like, I don't know. They don't get enough of visibility uh, as they should. So like just being able to tune into like a podcast, be able to go over those kind of is also great. Like, like even having a segment every week, like what are the upcoming tournaments? Yeah, exactly. That's like, exactly what I was going to. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, I, I, and of course, just because I named a lot of tournaments coming up, of course, stay tuned for the act tournament. Everybody knows that about is, it. That is, un- like, I have to say this is unfortunately at the same exact week weekends as the parents' tourneys. Yeah, I know. Um, we are going to try to not, like, collide too much there. I think there is going to be some overlap. Um, but yeah, that is also coming up. I'm going to cast both, so I'm going to sure hope there is not too much crabs. Uh... Uh, yeah, so that's one of the things that we that we really want to talk about. And people suggest they're ready to have uh, Q and A's for upcoming guests, uh, which will be more possible if we don't have to get them literally two hours before we start the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, this time around. Definitely. Uh, no, this was planned. I was. I've been. I've been planned, planned, planned. Researching content for this for the past week. You, you gotta understand, Ryan is, uh, is such a golden boy for a, a number of reasons. Uh, but especially especially for this podcast, it's awesome because no matter what you're talking about this time, for some reason, Ryan is always relevant. <laughs> so <laughs> you can always fight him. <laughs> for some uh, reason, Ryan like, fits in. It's okay. Ryan... US team captain. Yeah, we can, we can talk with that. Like, he's been with us for like half of the episodes at this point. It's insane. Um, we also do a pre Beat Saber World Cup tourney for Finland, Saska says. Wow, didn't know that. Didn't know that. See? Proving the point. Uh, so yeah, we're we're gonna have to discuss more uh, yeah. with uh, with a with a scheduling uh, what uh, what segments to put in to format it in a way that allows us to make it make it easier for us. But it, all this to say that we're gonna be back. It's not over yet. If you guys do a boomer episode, let me know. Oh, I yeah. thought about that. I thought about that. I oh love, my god. Dude. I could talk, I'm sure Magician the same way, I could talk about like 2018, 2019, even 2020 for hours. Like, the I could five like hour episode. Hour yeah. Episode. yeah. <laughs> like nonstop. Ooh, you're that, be, that. that is the one where we, where, where Ryan would be like. That's where I'm not relevant. Right. That yeah, really I was like, going to say. That like <laughs> Logan, uh, Emma, uh, Magician. Uh, we got Tammy back. Like oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Tammy. <laughs> that would be the hardest. Uh, which was, what I was saying is that, like, Ama, you can take my spot as a host for that because I'm not showing up. <laughs> for real, for real. Well, I, I think... I'd show up. I'd show up. I'd show up spin-off. as a viewer, but I would. No, I, I'd start playing in 2019. So the boomer like, spinoff. I, I missed most yeah. of the boomer stuff, but uh, if I, in I fact, we'll just. About it. We'll just have a BSPD episode. We'll just invite all the BSPD players. The Beat Saber Police. Department. Magician is cooking right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I'm. That's. That, I I could. That's happening. That's happening. That's happening. That's happening. That's happening. That reaction. Just imagine that. I don't know if I'm pointing in. The, it's the right direction for me. No. No, it's not. That. 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 Uh. That reaction. Sort of. Is uh, what I get to experience with all the stuff that we're cooking and have been cooking for, for EUC. Just like every time we come up with an idea, it's that. And it's great. I love it. I love working with Magician. It's so good. Get excited. Um, <laughs> heck. Lots of stuff. I'm getting a, Oh, yeah. W- w- one last question because I never asked. The first episode that we did for, for this podcast, we went on. W- w- like we went live. And we were on CC, and I was like, wait, we're on Cube, Cube, Cube Community? What? Huh? Why and what? how did it happen? So please, Magician and, and Ama, I'm guessing, tell me, did Magician just knock on the door and say, can we stream this on CC? Pretty much, yeah. He just wanted to do it there. I, so I, I don't, I, throughout the years, all the years we've done CC, like we've been, it's, it's coming up on five years at the end of this year we, we've been doing cc for five years right so throughout the whole history of cc i've i've tried to like absorb other parts of the community so that they do stuff on the Walt channel Disney looking ass but, that sounds evil yeah uh, 
It sounds evil. It's not that way. I'm trying. I try to do it to increase visibility, but also I I would like to respect the people's like individuality. Like if you want to do it on your own channel, do it on your own channel. I don't care. Like well, that's fine. Well, it was awesome. But I always too, like I always like try to. I like I like to like reach out like by hand. Like if you want to do it, do it. Like do it on the CC channel. I don't care. Um, because it have pe cool people doing cool stuff. I will always let happen on cc so if the, and i've told that to people over the years the same thing we did with snowy when he wanted to do um forgetting the name of the series because i'm a bad person but um, uh, replay the, the, uh, yeah replay analysis yeah. replay analysis yep so when he wanted to do that i was like if you want to do on cc you do it and he was like yeah sure we'll do it we'll put it on the channel and it just it, it increases visibility and I don't want to take away from your ability to be creative or make money or whatever you want to do with it. Cause like we don't make money at cube community, nothing we do makes any money. Um, so I'm not we trying either. to like, I'm not trying to like steal people's like thunder or something, but it's like, if you want it, more people to see it, like just do it here. So yeah, I think you might've, you might've said it in a DM. You might've said it in a, a chat somewhere that you, I think Magician Jolie just said, we did this on CC channel. I said, yes, that's all it was. So. Yeah, yeah I, I, we wouldn't make money with this anyway, just because the <laughs> one day, uh, uh, one day, if Beat Saber for some miracle stops uh, uh, losing popularity and keeps like restarts growing in popularity, I don't know. It's the but, goal. But uh, that's the goal. But until then, just being able to stream on CC is just being able to reach more people, which of course for a group of three casters, which uh, as a we love uh, attention. As a, a, Yes, exactly. As a symptom of being a casters, we love the sound of our voices and the fact that more people hear it. Just awesome. <laughs> it lets you, it I'm lets glad you, you do, because I don't. 8,000 well, people every time. You gotta cast I've all. never rewatched a match that I've casted in my entire life, and I refuse to. You told me, Ryan, you're stupid. Okay. <laughs> I think we might have, again, broken the record for the longest episode we have i'm pretty sure i said sure. i wasn't doing two and a half hours <laughs> <laughs> we're I mean, there again yet again how long how long was how long was the last one this one wait this one is two hours 23 this, this one is, is two, hour 30, two hours 28 and we're already cl we're closing in on two hours okay we're about equal to the episode with cooling and nolan jesus christ right we i think we can close it it's it's enough we're good world cup 2023 is a wrap Thank it's we say, it's it's such a running gang we say it every time it's gonna be at some point we have to make an episode under two hours i don't think we've done it yet <laughs> But no, we haven't. We haven't. It's it's gonna be one of these days. Uh, someday, please. Well, no, it's not gonna be the six-hour BSPD episode. That's happening. I. That's an awesome idea. That's definitely happening. We'll find a time at some point. But for now, thank you everyone for watching. Thank you, Ama and Ryan, for coming on and talking. It's been wonderful having you guys. All the welcome talk. Very very awesome. Thank you, Chad, for watching. Everyone that's stuck here on Twitch. If you're watching on YouTube and you're still here. I guess <laughs> all the links are in the socials, Twitter accounts, f join the Discord server, join Cube community. They're very cool. They do great stuff. World Cup just ended, but there's a lot more tournaments everywhere. They're announced everywhere. Follow my Twitter, follow Geo, follow Ixen, and then of course, Arma and Ryan. Um, we'll see you in some time. Join the Discord server. We'll announce everything there. Do you guys have anything to say? <laughs> We've said enough. Yeah. <laughs>